Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Daryl Wilson. Today in this video, I'll be showing you all how to create a car rental website with WordPress step-by-step. -step. With this website, you can offer car rentals, limo websites, or pretty much any type of rental website you like. So here's how it all works. The visitors come to your website where they can select a pickup location and the time. They can then search for the rentals on your website. After they have searched, they will then get a list of available rentals. And they can then select the rentals they wish to rent. On the next page, they can see the details and you can also offer additional services like premium seats or any extras you want to add for your rentals. Next, the customer will be brought to a checkout page where they can order the rental directly on your website. After the customer is ordered, they will then get a purchase receipt and you will also get an order notification. It's pretty straightforward. You will also have your own personal custom dashboard where you can view the rentals, make any changes you want, adjust customer details, and a whole lot more. And the whole website is drag and drop. So even if this is your first time making a website, you'll have no problem. So with this tutorial, you guys can pretty much make any type of rental website you guys like. I know the uh, title of the video says uh, car rentals, but you can make rentals for tractors or for limos or for equipment or for anything that you guys choose. Now we're gonna be using a free plugin to create this rental website. In the first part of this video, I'll be showing you how to use the free version of this plugin. However, this plugin obviously has a pro version. So later on in the video, I'll show you guys how to utilize all of the pro features of this plugin. The pro version offers various features and also allows you to integrate payment gateways so you can start accepting credit card payments on your website. And don't forget, we're also using a drag and drop builder. So even if this is your first time making a website, you guys will have no problems. Now we're gonna build your car rental website in four simple steps. In step one, I'll show you how to get your domain and hosting. A domain is the web address for your website, like mycarrentalwebsite.com, and web hosting hosts your website online 24 hours a day. In step two, I'll introduce you all to the general settings. I'll also show you how to import a pre-made starter website. In this part of the video, you'll get more comfortable with the builder and I'll show you how to navigate and design your website. In step three, we will then install a free plugin that will convert our website into a car rental website. With the free version, you can create listings, add search navigations, and much more. In step four, I'll introduce you all to the pro version. The pro version allows you to accept payments on your website. It also offers various features like extra add-ons, cron jobs, and a whole lot more. So first let's go to step one and get web hosting. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase fast cloud web hosting. And welcome to namehero.com. Now I've been recommending namehero.com for years and people love it. Uh, this week alone, I've had zero downtime with Name Hero, so you guys will have a reliable website. And also, my websites load at under one second with Name Hero. So we do test these servers to make sure that you guys do get the best web hosting possible. Now, once you guys are here, you'll click on Get Started Now, and then it'll bring you to four different pricing options. So we have the Starter Cloud, the Plus Cloud, the Turbo Cloud, and the Business Cloud. Now, I personally recommend the Plus Cloud if you guys are just getting started out, like if you're just getting your feet wet for the very first time. But for those of you who have been using WordPress for a while and you want to upgrade and get some more performance, I would definitely go with the Turbo Cloud because with the Turbo Cloud, you guys do get the new NVMe storage, which does just give you a little bit more performance with your website. So you'll go ahead and pick a package that works best for you and your budget. And then once you guys uh, figure your package out, you'll go ahead and click on order now. All right, and here you're going to enter in your domain name. So this is the name of your new website. So uh, portfoliowebsite.com or you know mynewswebsite.com or whatever whatever niche that you're building, you'll go ahead and put it here. So I'll just put it in tutorialdomain1.com and see if that's available. All right, cool, it's available. Now I know it takes time to figure out the domain of your website, so you know give it some time. You know it does take some thought for your new websites. Uh, once you guys figure it out, you guys will click on continue. All right, cool. So next we have the billing cycle and we have three years, two years, and one year. Now, personally, I'd recommend one year. You guys do get a large discount and this does give you enough time to decide if this is for you or not. However, if you guys are feeling very confident, I would recommend going with the two or three year plan. You guys do get the uh, deal the longer you sign up for. So uh, it really depends on your budget. But uh, once you guys select a billing cycle, we'll scroll down. And uh, I don't recommend any of these upsells personally. You can do this with free plugins. So yeah, you guys don't need those. And then we do get a free SSL with Name Hero. So that's pretty cool. Uh, once you guys select your billing cycle, we will then click on continue. 
All right, next we have the domain configuration. Now I personally recommend the ID protection guys. This will protect your personal information from spammers and people trying to sell you SEO packages and Viagra and all sorts of nonsense. Whenever you guys get those weird emails in your inbox, it's generally because they found your domain online. So this will actually protect you so you don't get spam in your inbox. So go ahead and click on ID protection and then click on continue. And look at that, for a year of hosting, you're paying less than $100, you're paying only 70 bucks. You guys can also go the cheaper routes and get the cheaper plan if you're on a really tight budget, but I think this is a great deal for web hosting for the entire year for this specific performance. So you guys are getting a reliable and a fast server for this price, so it's definitely worth it. So uh, go ahead and scroll down, just keep scrolling. Now you're gonna go ahead and fill out your billing information here, so your first name, your last name, uh, additional information. You'll put in your password and also a support pin. So this would be the pin that uh, they would use to verify that it's you. And then also we have uh, payment methods, so you can pay with PayPal, Coinbase, which is cryptocurrency, and credit card. Here you'll go ahead and put in your payment details. And if you guys do want to get their spam or their emails, they actually send some pretty good emails, guys. I'm not gonna lie, they have some cool uh, promotional offers. You'll go ahead and check that box. And then you'll, of course, uh, agree to their terms of service, right? I'm sure you guys are all gonna read uh, this here, right? You guys are all gonna read this. I don't think anyone ever reads any of this stuff, but uh, yeah, you'll go ahead and uh, check the terms of service. And once you guys have checked out, I will meet you guys in the customer portal. All right, and welcome to your new dashboard. So this is your current dashboard. As you guys can see, I had many different packages, many domains, and I also have tickets with Name Hero, and they really helped me out with all of my problems. So this is just your interface. On the left side, you can see your hosting packages. These are your current domains. You can always register a new domain. Uh, also billing. So if you wanna see your payments or you wanna add funds or you wanna adjust your payment methods, you can do that here. And also the support. So if you guys run into something weird, I know with websites, things just kinda get weird sometimes. Uh, you guys can always open a ticket here and they will help you out with all of your problems. And they are pretty fast. I mean, I think maybe under one hour, they can help you guys with all your problems. So once you guys are here, let's go ahead and install WordPress onto our new domain. You'll first click on My Cloud. Now here we have hosting packages. Now you should probably only have one here. So just go ahead and click on your hosting package. And next we're going to see this Login to cPanel. Go ahead and click on Login to cPanel. All right, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and install WordPress onto our domain. So up here, we'll type in WordPress. Here we go, we have WordPress Manager by Softaculous. We'll click on this. All right, and from here, we're going to install WordPress. You guys can see I have many installations of WordPress already, but right here, you'll click on Install. And now we're going to look for the domain that we purchased. So right here, you have the Choose Domain section. So you'll probably see your domain that you purchased. I'll just go ahead and select this one, but you're going to select the domain that you purchased. And for the protocol, make sure this is HTTPS which is the SSL. Now for indirectory, make sure nothing is here. All right, I don't know why that's there by default, but oops, <laughs> whoops. But uh, make sure nothing is there because that will install your domain onto like yourwebsite.com slash something and you don't want that there. It, it, yeah, just don't have that there. Make sure, that's, make sure that's empty. Now for the admin username, go ahead and give yourself an admin username and a password. And this is what we are going to use to log into the website. So whenever you wanna build your website, you're going to use these login credentials. So make sure you write these down. I'll just put admin. Never put pass, guys. Uh, make sure this is something unique. I'll just put uh, paddywhack. And your admin email. Make sure that this is an email that you have access to because when you forget your password, they will send this information to your email. So I'll put in my, my Gmail account here, my famous PC hoarder, which I do get tons of spam. And below that, you can always select your language. We can always adjust the language as well uh, inside the WordPress dashboard, and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. And we're gonna keep scrolling down here to the bottom. They have these other themes they want us to use, but uh, we're not gonna use these. And right here, you'll click on install. Yeah, they said three to four minutes. That was not three to four minutes, right? Now here we have install WordPress, and this is the administrative URL administrative <laughs> URL. So just go ahead and click on this link, and this will log you in to your website. All right, and welcome to your new WordPress dashboard. So this is where all the magic happens. Now, if you guys wanna see what your website looks like right now, here at the top left, we'll click on visit sites. And this is your new WordPress website. It's using a default WordPress theme, but not to worry, we'll make this site look really, really good. 
All right, cool. So congrats on your websites. So now that we have our websites, we can now go to section two, where we're going to import a pre-made website. So in this next section of the video, I'll introduce you all to the general settings. We'll import a pre-made template, and I'll show you how to uh, use the builder and navigate and customize your websites. You guys ready? Let's get started. So let's go to our dashboard. Now, before we install anything or change anything, we first need to adjust some of the general settings. So over here under the settings tab, let's first click on general. Now, if you guys do speak a specific language, you guys can actually change it right here, right? So for example, if you guys speak any of these other languages, they have quite a bit, you guys can uh, adjust it right here. Uh, also, make sure that this is the email address that you guys have access to, because if you guys uh, forget your password, it'll be sent to this specific email. So make sure you guys have access to this specific email. And then we'll go down and here you can adjust the date format and the time formats, and then we'll click on save changes. All right, now let's go over here and go to users and click on profile. Now here we can actually adjust the backend color scheme, right? Uh, this was actually like the first one that came out for WordPress. It's, it's really weird, <laughs> you know, it's kind of awkward, but uh, you know, that's, that's Des for you. And uh, yeah, you guys can actually change like the back end here. I like midnight. I think midnight's just easier to see on the eye, right? It's just really easy to see. And I do like the, the, um, like the darker scheme. So I must like midnight for this video. Also modern's really nice. Modern also is, is really good as well, you know, but uh, you know what? I'm sold on modern. We're, we're going to go to modern. All right. I, I changed my mind here last second, like the shark tank, you know, and then for the contact info, we will uh, make sure that you guys have access to this email again. Uh, again, this email is sent to, uh, if you guys do forget your password, all the information will be sent to this specific email right here. And then below that, if you guys do want to adjust a password or change it, you guys can change your password for WordPress right here. And I'll show you guys how to log in and log out in just a minute. But uh, yeah, you guys can create a new password for WordPress right here. And then you'll click on update profile. Next, we need to adjust our permalinks. So over here under settings, let's click on permalinks. Now, for the common settings, we're gonna select post name. And the reason why we do this is because when you go to a website, it says, you know, your website.com slash about us, right? Or contact us, not archives, one, two, three. It's, it's a disaster. So uh, make sure it's selected to post name. This is actually the optimal method for SEO purposes. So this will actually help you get boosted up in the Google rankings. We'll go ahead and click on save changes. All right, now let's go ahead and click on our dashboard. Now let's say for example, you guys want to log in and log out of your WordPress websites. First, I'll go ahead and log out. So the top right, I'll click on log out. And I'll go ahead and go to my uh, browser right here and I'll delete all this and just press enter. All right, so now you guys can see I am not logged into my websites. I'll go over here at the top and I'll type in dash WP dash admin and this will bring you to the login screen. And this is where you can log into your WordPress. So this is where you can pretty much work on your website from any location. Uh, just make sure the password is correct. I'll click on remember me and I'll click on login. There you go. And we're back to square one. So now we can start designing the website. All right, cool. So you guys got your domain and hosting and now we are all ready to go to the next step. So in this next section, I'll be showing you how to import a pre-made starter site. And I'll also show you how to customize and use the drag and drop builder. It's really easy. So let's get started. All right. So in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to import a pre-made starter website and get your website up and running. Now, the first thing we have to do is install a WordPress theme. So over here, you can see appearance and I'll click on themes. And at the top right here, we'll click on add new. Now, before we talk about which theme to install, I first want to explain what themes are and what they do to your website. First, let's talk about what is a WordPress theme. Every website you make with WordPress requires a specific WordPress theme. Without getting too techie, a WordPress theme is a general style and layout of your current website. Each WordPress theme has different options in the theme customizer. The options can range from a header and a footer builder, different blog post layouts, controlling the width of your website, like a blocks or a full width, or specific e-commerce features like product layouts or different shop page layouts. A WordPress theme generally controls the layout and style of your current WordPress website. A WordPress theme does not build the website itself, but it's more of an outside shell for the page builders and a starting point to build your WordPress website. Feel free to check out many of the WordPress themes to find a style that fits for you and your WordPress website. 
You guys got that? So what a WordPress theme does is it pretty much controls the header and the footer of your website. It also controls various blog layouts and also your products if you guys are running some sort of e-commerce website. But the theme that we're gonna use is called Astra. This is it right here. If you guys cannot find it, go to search themes, type in A-S-T-R-A. And this is the theme that we're gonna use. Make sure you guys install this theme and then click on activate. All right, once you guys install the actual theme, you'll get this little notice right here that says, uh, do you want to install the importer plugin? You can click on get started. If this notice did not pop up for you, over here under Astra options, we'll click on this. And you can always uh, get this option right here that says install importer plugin. And this is like the same exact thing. So just go ahead and click on install importer plugin. You can see here how it's uh, it's activating both, <laughs> both notices. And once you guys activate that plugin, it'll prompt you to this little setup page where it's going to create this really annoying auto playing video. We're gonna go ahead and scroll down here and click on build your website now. Now here we have three different page builders. And for this specific website, I highly recommend to use Elementor. It's pretty much the best page builder out of all of them as of this very moment. That's a little controversial and subjective, but in my personal opinion, most people prefer Elementor because it's stable, it's really easy to use, and it's very lightweight. So we're gonna click on Elementor. All right, and once you guys do click on Elementor, you will see a list of templates. Now, if these templates did not show up for you, just click on the refresh button here at the top left. That does happen sometimes in some of my videos, I have seen that the, just like the templates don't load at all for whatever reason. And uh, here we can go ahead and scroll down. Now, since we are building a car rental website, let's just enter a uh, car and see what we got right here. Now there are premium kits and there are free kits. The ones that don't have the premium are free and the ones that have the premium are paid. If you guys do want to upgrade to the pro, I'll leave a link below, but I do not recommend to uh, purchase the pro. You don't need it right now. Uh, there's a lot more to cover and you guys can obviously build your own. You don't have to purchase one of their templates, but this is the one I wanna use right here. It is called the Limousine Rental Agency. So let's click on this one here. And just remember guys, you can always go back and change the templates. You can, uh, you know, go from template to template. You're not stuck, right? This isn't like the, um, you know, this isn't like the Shark Tank where you have to make the deal right now. So uh, once you're at this page, you can go ahead and upload your logo. If you guys do not have a logo, don't worry about it. I'll show you a really cool website where you can get a really nice logo for your website. But uh, right here, we'll click on skip and continue. Next, it'll prompt you to select some colors. Now, again, you guys can always change this a little bit later, but essentially they're just trying to give you some sort of color scheme that you might want to add for your websites. And this applies throughout the website, right? So for example, you can see that, uh, you know, we can change the colors here and so on and so forth. But uh, I think maybe we should leave it to, you know, I like this color. It's more brighter. It's a little bit more vibrant. I do like that. And then below that we have fonts and you guys can also choose between various fonts. I do like Poppins and Lado, but for this specific websites, I'm not sure about it. You know, that's, um, you guys can kind of go through here and just take a look at some of these fonts. Let me see here, which one works good? Which, which, which one works best here? Let's let's take a look here. This one's pretty cool. You know, it's, it's not bad, right? This one's a little bit too friendly. This one's too, this is like for like home decor, you know? And this one, yeah, we're gonna go with the default one. They did a good job selecting that font. Next, we'll click on continue. Here you guys can go ahead and choose in to opt in to their email. You guys do not have to. And then right here, you'll click on submit and build my websites. Now this process can take anywhere between, I don't know, one to two minutes. So just go ahead and just wait it out and uh, yeah. All right, so that only took me about 23 seconds, not too long. Right here, we'll click on view your websites. And then we can close this other window. All right, and this is our new WordPress website. You know what, it's already looking really, really sharp, you know? And here we go, let's just go ahead and take a look here, make sure everything has loaded. All right, awesome. Everything looks great. And then we can go ahead and scroll back up here. Let's go ahead and scroll up. And then we'll take a look at the other pages just to make sure that they have properly loaded. There we go, we got our limos. And just remember, you guys can change everything and I'll show you guys how to do that in about a few seconds. But uh, yeah, as of right now, you know, we have a full on uh, rental website that is renting limousines. But of course, all you have to do here is just change the pictures, change the fonts, and you can turn this into like, you know, a, a, anything. You can turn this into a normal car rental website or a truck rental website or whatever you want, just by simply adjusting the images. 
So next, let me give you guys a five minute crash course on how to use the Elementor page builder. If you guys already have experience with this builder, you guys can go ahead and skip to the next section. But for those of you who are total noobs, no problem, I got your back. We'll go ahead and show you guys how to use this builder. At the top right here, you'll click on edit with Elementor and this will enable the page builder where you can start designing and customizing your website. All right, now once you guys start the builder, for some reason there's this gradient here. I have no idea why it shows up there to be, to be quite honest. Uh, you can actually get rid of this gradient color by clicking on these six dots, going to style right here, and then just switching from gradient to classic and it goes away. I have no idea why that comes up, but uh, it's probably just from the template, whatever. But I'll go ahead and click on these nine squares right here, and this is going to uh, enable the elements. Now how this works is you can see that there's elements on the left side. There are free elements and there are also pro elements. We can take these elements and simply drag them onto the page like that, right? And we can click on the squares again and we can keep dragging stuff in there, right? And we can drag in a video, we can drag in all sorts of stuff. But uh, since this text is a little bit more advanced and stuff like that, I wanna go ahead and start from scratch. So let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this pencil and delete everything, right? I wanna start from scratch with you guys. So let's right click on this pencil, delete, right click and delete. And then we'll also, there we go, X. And then we can go ahead and delete that as well. So now we're starting with just a blank little uh, spot right here. So next let's go ahead and click on the X one, this one right here. And there you go. So now we're just left with this like, just one little column. Now what we can do here is we can take an intersection and we can drag that into the two squares and this creates two columns, right? If you wanna create three columns, just right click on this one and duplicate it. Now we have three columns and we can go ahead and drag and drop elements, right? So for example, we have the heading, I'll put that in the column one. And then also we have the text editor, put that on column two. And then also maybe like a button here, column three and so on and so forth. And over here, I'll just throw in an image. And then below the image, I'll just throw in a button, right? You guys get the point, right? It's totally drag and drop. You can just drop in elements anywhere. Uh, as soon as you drag in an element and there's that blue line, uh, that blue line pretty much tells you where it's going to be dropped at. So if I drop it right there, you can see it enables it right there, right? So now let's talk about the actual elements. For every element, there is three columns. There is the contents, the style, and the advanced. The content pretty much controls the content and also some of the position. For example, right here, you can see that this is add in your heading text. I'll put in something like, make your cool website with Daryl. And here we can control the alignment, right? You can adjust the alignment right here. Now for the style, this is where you can control the color, the topography, and also add some cool animations. Here, I'll go ahead and put in the white color, right? Oops. Didn't mean, to, didn't mean to close that. And then for the topography, you'll click on the pencil here, and this is where we can adjust the size. And then there's also other various uh, styles, like for example, if you wanna italicize it, you, you can do that, or make it oblique, or whatever. But they're just more styling options for your text. Then also there's like text shadow, where you can add like a shadow behind the actual text if you wanna enable that. And there's also blend mode, but that's a little bit more advanced, and that allows you to blend the text into specific backgrounds. Next you have advanced. Now, the only thing I wanna show you from this column is probably the motion effects where you can add little animations to your text that, you know, to, to fade them in like that. You know, some people like that stuff. Just don't go too crazy. Like that, that's too crazy. A bouncing, yeah, I don't like bouncy stuff. I like, let's see what else we got here, flash. Oh no, that, that, that is way too much here. All right, we're, we're, we're getting too crazy. We're going, we're going to default, all right? Just, just keep it simple, all right? And also there is layout. Now, the one thing I wanna talk about is padding. Padding essentially controls the space. So let's say you wanna add space above your elements, you'll just add in space, right? Let's say you wanna add in space below the elements, then you'll just put in space like that. So that's just a quick introduction to padding and also to um, you know the animations and stuff like that. But uh, now that you guys have a little, you know, that you're a little bit more warmed up with this page builder, now let's create a real life heading background that we're gonna use for our website. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this all again and let's start from scratch. Here we have heading, right? I'll drop in the heading. And what should, what should be our main heading? Like rent your dream car. And then we should put like a Pinto or something, <laughs> you know, something really like, something really like, uh, like old, you know, but just as a joke. And then for the style right here, we'll go ahead and change the color. And then for the topography, I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, right? Something like that. 
And we also need some filler text. Filler text is essentially text that pretty much goes below this, right? Just so it's not so alone, right? Just so it's not so naked. Here, I will adjust the alignments. And then also we'll change the color. You can see here how it just adds in like filler space. You see that? See how it looks a little bit more structured? And this is just demo content, obviously, right? Now, one thing also is, let's say, for example, you don't want to have like a really high-end service. This guy in the back right here, he's wearing a suit, he's on his phone. So if I'm a visitor for the first time, I'm going to assume that this is a very expensive website. Let's change the background. To change the background of your website, you'll click on these six dots here at the top. And right away, you'll click on the style. And here you can see the image. I'll go ahead and trash this image. Now, if you guys just want to add like a basic color, you guys can just, you know, throw in like a basic color here or whatever, you know, we can go ahead and do that. But uh, I want to go ahead and upload an image. So here I'll click on choose image. And I have demo images for all of you guys in the description below of this video. However, if you guys are using the Astra theme, you will see this free images tabs. If you guys are not using Astra, then this will not show up. So Astra has a free integration with Pixabay that pretty much allows you to uh, get images for free from pixabay.com. Now, what I'm gonna search for over here is like car or Mustang or something like that. Let's just see what pops up here. Now, whenever you guys search for something, it does take like a minute. This is the one I wanna use right here. I'm gonna go ahead and download that one before it disappears. And there you go. All right, cool. So there we go. We can see that we have our really cool background, but you guys can use any image that you want. So for example, I'll go back over here and I'll just put like car or something or anything that represents your business you'll get a lot of options. Uh, my dad actually had this car right here, the Ford GT, uh, an amazing car. We got it when it first came out back in 2000, it was like 2005 when, the, when this car first came out. And now like the new ones cost like easily like half a million dollars or way too expensive. But that one only cost about 150 grand when it first came out. So we definitely got a deal. But uh, yeah, so it's probably getting a lot of cars right here, but you'll just go to this list and pick out some uh, cars or background that fits your need. Looks like it's going a little crazy there. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that now. Oh, it stopped. Yeah, it does that. It just imports a lot of cars and stuff. That's actually a really cool background right there. I like this one with the, I believe that's like the Legardo or the, I'm sorry, Gallardo. That looks a really cool background. I like that. I'm gonna go ahead and close this now. All right, cool. So now that I added the background image, I now want to adjust the color of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. We'll go to the style and the text color, and I want to match the rest of the font on the website. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste in that color code. And then maybe we'll just change this to something more simple, like rent a car or something. Rent a car. I don't know. Something, something simple, you know, something, something basic, something that uh, everyone knows what we're doing. All right, so at this point, we now have a pretty nice looking landing page. Now you guys can go through the rest of the website here and you can adjust it as needed. Now, let's say for example, you guys wanna add a new section somewhere in between these sections, right? Here we have this plus icon, I'll click on plus, and this allows us to create a new row within these two columns. So I'll go ahead and click on the plus, and here I'll just put in like a, I don't know, two column row. I'll click on the elements, and then we can build this just as usual. So I'll go ahead and you know drag this in there like that. So we can put it in an image. And then we'll just throw in like a little button or something like that, right? A button. Now remember, these are just placeholder images. So if you guys do need images, you'll just click on choose image. I believe I have some in my media file right here. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and just put in this guy. There we go. And then like, uh, this is super easy, right? Super easy. And for the advanced, we can go ahead and add some padding, right? So for example, this is too close to this edge right here. Notice that, so I'll just go ahead and uncheck this and just throw in some padding, you know, just a little bit. Maybe 50 and 50, maybe for the bottom as well. Oh, I meant this one down here. I'm gonna go ahead and add in some padding here to the bottom, right? There we go. And then of course we can do this throughout the website. Now, um, this is pretty much like a crash course on how to use this builder. If you guys do wanna learn more about how to use Elementor in this specific page builder, I do have another video that talks about this page builder. It's about an hour and a half long, so it's a lot more detailed. But for this video, I really wanna focus more on the rental aspect. So that's pretty much it for the crash course. <laughs> you know, uh, if you guys do have any questions on how to use this builder, just let me know. But as you guys can see, it's pretty simple, right? It's just drag and drop. I mean, you guys can simply just, uh, you know, drag in elements here. And it's really, really simple. Now, of course, there is a lot more advanced stuff you can do with this builder, like the theme builder and a lot more other things. But again, I do have another video covering all the advanced features with this builder. 
One thing also I do want to mention is that if you guys ever messed up or something or you want to go back in history, they have a history button right here where you can just go ahead and backtrace to every step right here to exactly where you might have made a mistake. This is a very cool feature and I do like it. So if you guys do want to backtrace, you guys can use the history button. I'm going to go ahead and close this now and then scroll up to the page. Now I want to go ahead and update this. Just make sure that my progress is saved. And then I'll go ahead and close the builder. So I'll go ahead over here and click on view page. All right, cool. So that's how you guys can use the Elementor page builder. Now let's talk about how to add pages and also how to assign them to the menu. Let's say, for example, you guys want to add more pages, right? Maybe you want to add like our team or something like that. Let's do that. Over here under plus new, we'll go to page. This is how you guys can create new pages for your websites. And this will be like our team. Boop, 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 boop. Our team. There we go. I'll publish this and publish. And then I'll click on edit with Elementor. What this will do is this will activate the builder on our new page that we created. And here we go. We can go ahead and build this page as usual. Now to speed this up, Elementor actually does have a lot of cool templates and also Astro does as well. Here I'll click on the Astro starter templates. And I don't want to use these right here because these obviously don't really match the criteria and color scheme of our current websites. But I want to click on blocks right here. And with these blocks, we can go ahead and choose a specific category. So let's say, for example, you're looking for like testimonials or staff or team. I'll go ahead and just see if I can find something here. Let's just do team right here. And uh, I'll go ahead and import this block. Here, I'll click on import block. All right. And then you can just, you know, put in the images for your staff, right? So this would be like our team or our staff. And here you'll just go ahead and replace this image with your current staff member. Maybe it's like this guy here, right? The image is a little bit small. Maybe we should find a, a better image. Yeah, this is 100 by 100 pixels, which is a really, really small image. Do we have any other images here? No, we don't. All right, so it looks like, it looks like we're stuck. We're going to have to use these ones. These are 300 by 300. So you'll just want to make sure that you add images uh, for your staff. And then let's say this is Jenny, right? This is Jenny Craig. And she is the founder and CEO, right? And then here you can put in some description about Jenny. And then also you can link her social profiles like her Facebook, her LinkedIn, and also her Instagram or her, you know, Twitter or her TikTok, whatever these kids use nowadays, you can just throw it in right there. All right. And uh, once you guys have done that, we'll then click on updates. So that's how we can create new pages and also design them with the page builder. Now let's go ahead and add it to the menu. Let's go back to exit the dashboard. And there's a little uh, view pages button. There it goes. That little WordPress logo shows up a little late for some reason. Under appearance, we will then see menus. Now, first you want to make sure that you select the primary menu. All right. So when you import the Astro starter website, they do create an, a menu for you automatically. And they also do create pages for those uh, menus as well. Here we have the home about services, our fleet and con contact. I'll click on view all right here and we can go ahead and add in the our team page. So under the our team, I will add this to the menu. And then we can adjust this, right? I'll put it right there. Now also, if you guys do want to create a drop down menu, let me just explain to you what that is. I'll just use the sample page and also add this to the menu. And then I'll create this drop down. So you see here how I'm dragging it below services. So that means on your menu, when people hover over services, it'll also show the sample page. So let me go ahead and show you guys. Now, once you guys have added that to the menu, you'll then go to the bottom right and click on save menu. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and click on visit sites. And here we go. So we have the home about the our team, right? If I click on our team, you're going to see that our team page shows up right here. Pretty cool. And then also we have this drop down. So here under services, notice how there's a sample page. This is actually very useful if you have subcategories, like for example, if you have services and you want to label all of your services in different categories like rentals or buy it now, or I don't know, massage services, <laughs> whatever you want to offer for your rental websites, you can create categories below your services, which looks a little bit more organized. And here, if I click on the sample page, 
obviously it'll just take them to whatever page that you have created, right? So that's how you guys can create pages and also add them to the menu. And the last thing I quickly wanna talk about before we install the free plugin to turn this into a rental website is the actual theme customizer. At the top right here, you'll click on theme customizer. Now what the theme customizer does is it pretty much controls the header and also the footer of your website. It also allows you to add in your site identity and also your logo to the website. For example, here we have site identity. Here we have site icon. The site icon will display at the way top left. So for example, I'll go ahead and just grab in some sort of sample icon here. All right, so I went ahead and I uploaded my coffee website, Kopi Coffee, and I'll click on select. Now notice here at the way top right, you can see that the logo displays in the browser. So that's how you can add a site identity to your actual website. And then I'll click on crop image. All right, cool. So it's there at the way top right there, you can see it. I probably should have used the white text, but you guys get the point, right? You can pretty much upload a icon right there and that'll display in your browser. Now let's go ahead and go to back. But first, let's click on publish just to save that. Now, the next thing I wanna show you how it's to customize and organize is the actual header. Here we have the header builder. Now the header builder pretty much controls the header of your websites. This is where you can add in your social icons, you can adjust the menu and also adjust the button. For example, we have three columns right here. If I click on plus, it'll create a list of little elements that we can use. Here I'll click on social. Notice here at the top, the social icons have displayed and you guys can drag these right? So you can see there now I'm dragging them over there or I can drag them to the bottom. And what this does, it creates rows. So as of right now, we only have one row. You can add up to three rows with this WordPress theme if you choose to do so. For example, I'll click on plus again, and then we can add in like a, a widget, right? A widget is essentially just adding in some sort of a widget, right? And there's tons to choose from. There's text, there's images, there's videos, there's buttons. There's a whole lot of widgets that you can add to your actual menu and spend hours getting crazy with it. But uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in something very basic here. Like, uh, let me see, what should I put in here? Like, I'll just put in more social icons, you know, just for tutorial purposes. Now, if you guys do want to customize the actual elements, you'll just simply click on the actual element here and then you'll get two options. You'll get the general and the design. The general pretty much allows you to enter the URL into the actual icon. and the design, you can completely change the icon color, the background color, you can adjust the size and so on and so forth. So for every element, you guys can adjust the actual general section. And then also you can change the design for every single element that you guys add to your menu. Now also you guys can choose to add in a background color by clicking on the gear icon. So for example, I'll click on this one here because we're using this row. And then we can change the heights of this and then we can also change the design, right? So we can add in like a background color or padding and so on and so forth. Now, as of right now, we're using a transparent header. So in order to design the background of this specific menu, we'll first click on a transparent menu here at the bottom because we are using a transparent header. And then we can go ahead and design it right here because we are using the transparent header options. So for example, if you wanna add in like a background overlay, we can add in a white background or a black background or any sort of background that you guys want. If you guys don't want a background, just click on the little uh, default. And now we're using the transparent background option. So on your own time, feel free to go through the header options, you know, mess around with these options. Here, we'll go ahead and put the social behind the button. All right. I mean, we have a pretty big menu, but uh, you guys get it, right? So that's how you guys can pretty much design and customize your menu and also how to add in your logo and your site identity. I think I did cover the logo, right? For the header builder, you'll click on the title and logo, and this is where you can upload your logo. So for example, I'll just go ahead and throw in my Kobe Coffee logo. Here we go, all right. We'll go ahead and put that right there. All right, and there we go. So now you can see our logo is right there. And we can also adjust the height. So this is a lot larger. So for the logo width, we can go ahead and make that a little bit more smaller like that. And then once that's done, we'll go ahead and click on publish. And that's pretty much it. So again, the theme customizer controls the header, the footer and other various parts of the actual website. On your own time, feel free to go through this, check it out. And yeah, that's pretty much all it takes is just a lot of trial and error. I'm gonna go ahead and close the theme customizer now.
All right, so that's pretty much how you guys can design the website, add pages, and also use the theme customizer. Now, one thing also I do want to remind you all is if you guys do need a logo, I would definitely recommend going to fiverr.com. Fiverr.com is a service where it's a marketplace of freelancers and they can create a really nice logo for you for maybe around like, uh, I don't know, like five to a hundred dollars, just depending on, on your budget. And this website actually has really, really cool freelancers. And I myself, I got my first logo from these guys. So you can find some really nice designers on this website. So if you guys do need a logo for your websites, go to this website, hire a freelancer, pay like maybe 25, 30 bucks for a logo. If you guys go to those free logo websites on the internet that you find, you legally cannot use those logos. So I highly recommend not to use those uh, websites. But if you guys are a, you know, a business that just needs a logo really quick, I would definitely, definitely recommend going to fiverr.com. So now that we covered the website aspect of this tutorial, now let's go ahead and move on to the next section and talk about the rental aspect of this website. All right, welcome back guys. So now that you guys know how to use the builder and you guys know how to, you know, customize and design your websites. Now let's go to section three and install a plugin that'll turn this website into a car rental website. So in this part of the video, we'll install a free plugin. I'll introduce you all to the general settings. We'll create a listing and you'll pretty much learn how to create a rental website in this part of the video. Are you guys ready? Let's get started. All right, welcome back guys. So in this part of the video, I'll be showing you how to turn this website into more of a rental website. Now we're gonna be using a free plugin in order to accomplish this. So let's get started. Let's go over here to our dashboard and then over here under plugins, we'll click on add new. And for search plugins, we're gonna type in VIK, VIK. And you're gonna come across a plugin called Vic Rental Car Management System. This is the plugin that we're gonna use, right? Uh, if you guys do wanna create like a hotel website, I actually have a video with this plugin, but for this video, we're gonna be using the Vic, Vic Rent Car, Car Rental Management System. So go ahead and click on Install Now. I'll also go ahead and put a link to this plugin if you guys can't find it for whatever reason. And then we'll click on Activate. So once you guys install the plugin on the very left side, you're going to see Vic Rent Car. So go ahead and click on Vic Rent Car. All right. Now, when you first come to this uh, plugin, it'll ask you to import the sample data. I highly recommend to do this because this will give you a better understanding of you know where things are and how to customize them. So go ahead and click on Select Sample Data. And right here we have Select Sample Data. We have campers, vans, trailers cars and rentals and scooters and motorbikes. Now, of course, you guys can always come back to this later and change this, but to help follow along in this video, just select car rental and click on install sample data. And now it's going to import the sample data to help get us started with this plugin. All right, so now let's take a quick look over here to see if this has imported everything. So I'll click on the car list and voila, it has imported the car list. Now, before I go on in any of these options, I first want to add the search form onto the websites, right? So um, we'll talk about all these options, but let's just first add the search navigation to the actual websites. So let's go back over here to the homepage and click on edit with Elementor. All right, and here we go. Uh, this gradient, I have no idea why it's there, guys. <laughs> I really don't know. In fact, if you click on the dots here and you go to style and you just switch between gradient to the classic, it goes away. I, again, it's just weird WordPress error glitches, whatever, but it doesn't display on the real website. Now we're going to go ahead and search or go down to the bottom here and go to WordPress. And we are now going to see this Vic rent car search form. We're going to go ahead and drag and drop this form onto the actual page right here. Now, when you import the actual uh, short code, it propagates a vertical form. You can also change this to a horizontal view. So for example, we have horizontal right here and then it changes it to a horizontal style. Now, if your form came out a little distorted, this does happen on some browsers and I have reached out to the developer and they will be fixing this in a small update. So by the time you're watching this, it'll all be all good. Now, one very important option here is the page. You really wanna select search your car. The reason why is because if you click on search, nothing will happen. So you need to basically tell the actual search Ajax where to go. So here we have search your car. And one other thing too, is if you guys do wanna get a little bit more customizable, here in the advanced section, we can add a background to this. So for example, we have the backgrounds, we have the classic, and then we have a color. 
So if you guys do want to add some sort of color here, you guys can also do that. I will probably leave the color on for this tutorial because it's just easier to show you guys and you can see the letters. So that's how you guys can add a uh, background here to the actual form. So I'll go ahead and click on update. And then I'll view the page. Now I'm going to quickly go ahead and run through a little test search just to make sure that this is working. So I'll put uh, Monday and there, and then I'll click on a search. All right. So now you'll see that we have a available list of cars that we can search. So we do know that it's working. Now, a lot of this is demo content, so don't worry about it. We're going to change that in the very next section here. I will click on the Hyundai. We can see the car. I can click on the price and then they'll click on book now. And then this takes them to the actual summary area where they can go ahead and purchase everything. So we know the actual uh, plugin and everything is working. Now we need to go ahead and customize it. So let's go back to the dashboard here. Now we're going to go down to Vic rent car, Vic rent car. It's just such a weird name, Vic rent car. You know, they should probably change the name here. All right, now we're going to go through each tab one by one here and I'll explain what all these are. After we're done with the free version, I will then be talking about all the features in the pro version because you guys will, will come across many of the because you guys will come across many of the features that are only available in the pro version. So let's get started. You guys ready? Now, let's say for example, you guys want to add tax to your, you know, car rental service, right? And this is actually, you know, pretty pretty common, right? So the new tax rate name, we'll just put main tax. And what is the tax rate you want to apply to your cars? Well, I'll put like maybe a 5% tax rate. Okay. And then we'll click on save. Now, as we go in this tutorial, um, you guys are going to see that a lot of these features build on each other, right? Because we are first going to create tax and then we're going to create characteristics. And then we add those to the actual car listing. So next we have type of prices and the developer thought it'd be a good idea to create something like rental cost, non-refundable and full damage cost refundable. Now, I think what we should have done here was put rental cost refundable and full damage non-refundable, right? That would have made more sense. So I'll go ahead and add in one more right here of new price. So this will be the rental car refundable, refundable. So next we have price attributes. Now price attributes can be a little bit more outside of the box. Let's say, for example, you guys want to rent based off the miles per day or the kilometers per day. You guys can do that. You guys can pretty much rent based off of any sort of um, attribute that you want, like distance or time or how many people. But most traditional car rental places will just, you know, have like a daily service. But if you guys do want to rent based off of a specific uh, attribute, you can also do that. But I'm going to leave it blank because I'm just going to rent everything per day. And then we'll also talk about hours a little bit later. So I'll go ahead and save that. So now we have the rental cost non-refundable, the full damage cost refundable, and then the rental, the rental car refundable. Now I could make one more. That is the full damage non-refundable. That's basically saying you're going to rent the car uh, with a specific type of insurance. Hope that makes sense, right? So now that we've created these three or that we have these three, let's keep going here. So now we have the pickup and the drop off locations. Now, for example, you guys would want to put in your locations here. Now, if you guys are a larger enterprise, you guys would probably have a lot of locations, right? So this can take a long time. However, to simplify this, I'm just going to add one. So I'm just going to imagine that I am a car rental service in Las Vegas, and that's pretty much it. But if you're like, uh, you know, enterprise or if you're uh, Hertz or something, you're obviously going to have like hundreds of locations and hundreds of pickup locations and stuff like that. So this again, this part can be very broad, but uh, let's go ahead and click on new location, location name. You guys can go ahead and give this location a name. This will be the Las Vegas center. For the location address, I'll just put in an address here, Las Vegas Boulevard. Now here we have latitude and longitude. So let me explain where to find this. Okay, so I opened up Google Maps and this is a basically applying to Google Maps. Now, let's say for example, my location is, you know, maybe it's at the Luxor Hotel, right? So obviously you're gonna find your location and then you're going to uh, right click on it. So over the Luxor Hotel and Casino, I'm gonna right click and then you're gonna see these little, um, these little coordinates right here, right? So we have 360962 and then 
minus 115. We're going to go ahead and paste that back onto our website. So I'll go ahead and paste that over there. And then we're going to take this one, and this is our longitude, right? Longitude, right? And just make sure everything's backspaced just like that. So that's how you guys can apply the latitude and longitude. Later on, uh, users will be able to click on an actual map and go directly to that location. Here we have the override tax rate. So what we can do is say, you know what? I want to apply the main tax 5%. Remember earlier how we created that? Well, there it is. So that is the main tax rate. Here you can give a brief description about the actual center. So this is the best Las Vegas car dealership rental service. Okay. And I believe that's it. Next, we have the opening time. So what are your hours? Right. Go ahead and put your hours over here. Now, um, I know in America, we don't use the 24 hour system, so we can change that in the global section. But for now, let's just pretend that we do. OK, we'll, we'll change that in the next section. OK, because I do have a very large audience and it's really hard to accommodate everybody. So I'm going to select that we open at 10 p.m. I'm sorry, 10 a.m. And we close around, I don't know. We close around 5 p.m. So that'd be 17. Right. So. We are open from 10 to 5. You can also select a suggested time. So let's say, for example, you guys are just available, you know, around 11 o'clock. You know, that's when usually you guys are around the office more. So next we have override opening time. Let's say, for example, you guys want to have different hours of operation on specific days. Uh, for example, Sunday is a very common day where you guys might be open from just like, you know, 12 to, you know, 12 to 4 or something. So open up Sunday right here. And I'm going to say, you know what, we're going to only open from 12 o'clock to maybe like, I don't know, we'll put like, uh, let's go down here. Uh, we'll do like uh, till four o'clock, right? So we're open from 12 o'clock to four o'clock only on Sunday. Now, sometimes when you guys are working, um, you guys might wanna take lunch breaks, right? Uh, this is where the lunch breaks come into play. Now, if you guys can add breaks to any part of the day as well. So let's say for example, uh, two o'clock right here would be a break for us, right? So two to three is a break. So I'll click on breaks right here. And for the uh, time, we're going to select 14, right? 14 to 15 is our lunch break, right? 14 to 15 is our lunch break. And now I'm basically saying, so from Sunday, we're only open from 12 to four and we take a one hour lunch break from two to three, right? So we're pretty much only open for just a few hours of the day just to basically accept rentals and really not gonna work that really hard, you know? So that's how you guys can override opening times. Now let's go ahead and keep scrolling down. So next we have closing days, right? So when is your, you know, rental service closed? Well, for closing days, we can select the days right here. So I'll say, you know what, we're closed, um, you know, the 16th, the 23rd or the 30th, and we can select daily or every week. For example, let's say we're closed on the weekends, right? So I'll click on the 16th and I'll put every week right here. So I'm basically saying we're closed every week from the 16th. I'll have that date. And then also I will add the 17th and say we are also closed every, you know, every week for, um, for every week for that specific uh, day. You guys can also choose to say, you know what? We are closed only on specific holidays. So maybe uh, Christmas or something. We have, you know, Christmas, December 30th or 31st, right? And we can always add that date as well. So we're basically saying uh, we're closed every other week from these dates and we're also closed on specific days as well. So that's how you guys can add closing days to your establishment. Now, once we have filled all this information out, we will now click on save. All right, cool. Now I'll click on save and close. So that's how you guys can add locations, right? It does take a little bit of time to get used to. Sometimes when I'm messing this with myself, sometimes I do make errors and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot I have to add this. So uh, feel free to come back to this. And if you guys do have any problems, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you guys out. Uh, the next is restrictions. However, restrictions is only available in the pro version. So we will have to come back to that once we talk about the pro. Uh, next we have cars, right? Here we have categories. Categories are essentially saying what type of car, right? So we have truck, we have limo, and we also have uh, just like a normal car. I'll click on city car right here and I'll change this. We're gonna put just car. And then under city chick, we're gonna change this to truck, right? So maybe we have trucks. And then also we'll create a new category and this can be something like limos, right? You guys can also add a description, you know, like what is a limo and you know, limos are awesome. And then we'll click on save. So that's how you guys can add categories. 
Uh, next, let's take a look at car options. Now, car options are available in the pro version. Car options are essentially adding in extra services like I showed you guys in the beginning of the video where they can add little features to add on. Next, we have characteristics. Characteristics are what is inside of the car or what does this car offer? For example, does the car have air condition? Well, we can create AC, extra passenger, uh, a larger luggage or a smaller luggage, but let's add in one more. Let's add in a turbo charge, right? So some cars are turbo charged and some are not. So over here we have new characteristic. And for the characteristic name, we're gonna type in turbo. Next, you're gonna see the text next to icon. Now we need to go to, I think it's called Found or Font Awesome, and we're gonna go ahead and get some uh, icons. All right, so this is fontawesome.com. It's a free service. You guys do not need to pay or sign up at all. So uh, what I'm gonna do over here is go to the search and I'm gonna type in turbo. Now I did talk to the developer before this and you guys need to make sure that you're using the 5.15 version or else it will not work. So uh, the six point version doesn't work yet for some websites. So just make sure you select 5.15.4. But if you guys are watching this video for maybe three months from now, uh, it would probably be fixed by then. So again, I'm not sure, but I know that this is a stable version for the Vic booking plugin. I'm gonna type in turbo. Turbo, or actually no, speed. I think I typed in speed, yeah. Speed, all right. And we're gonna go ahead and grab one of these right here. Now you need to make sure these are free. Okay, so these are the free ones. And also like this one right here. We'll copy this, we'll go back to our websites, and then we're gonna paste that in there. Now you guys can also choose to assign this to specific cars, but we can always assign this to cars when we create them, so I don't think that's really necessary. Let's go ahead and click on save. All right, and here is the actual icon. If the icon does not display for you, double check the version and double check that if it's free, uh, if you are using like the paid ones, it will not work. And if you are not using the correct version, it also will not work. So that's how you guys can pretty much add any characteristic that you want to the actual car. All right, so that is characteristics. Now let's go ahead and go to car list. All right, now these are the available cars that we have for rent, right? So we have the Alpha, the Hyundai, and this Renault. I have no idea what that is, but let's make a new one, right? So let's make a new car here and start from scratch. So I'll click on new car. All right, now what kind of car are you going to offer? Well, we're gonna put in an Infinity. This is the car I actually have, Infinity. You guys can get a quick little preview of my car, you know? How many of these cars do you have? Well, I have about three. What is an image of the car? Well, let's find one. I'll click on choose file. Now, I actually do have demo images for all of you guys in the description below of this video. These are from other videos, but uh, I'm just going to use these two right here. Uh, these are the cars that I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna click on this one here. Again, I will clean all that up and I'll have only the cars for you guys in the description below of this video. And then here we also have extra images. I'll just go ahead and throw in this wet run. You guys can add more as needed. You guys can also choose to resize the image. Now this will actually resize the image to make it more responsive for the actual search results. You guys can go ahead and check that if you guys want to. Uh, it actually might help. I actually don't know, to be honest, we'll have to see. Uh, next we have category. So what category does this car belong to? Well, obviously it's a car, right? So I'm gonna assign it to the actual car. The next thing is the pickup locations and drop off locations. So where can they pick up this car and where can they drop it off? Well, uh, I'll go ahead and click on this and this shows a available list of the places that we have created, right? So we did create the Las Vegas Center and these are other uh, demo places as well. But let's just go ahead and click on the Las Vegas Center because this is the one that I created and we can choose to drop it off at various locations, right? So they don't have to drop it off only at Las Vegas Center. They can drop off the car anywhere they want, right? Maybe they're driving across, you know, across the country. Uh, we'll go ahead and select the Florence, the Florence Airport, the Las Vegas Center. I mean, Paris and London, that's not even on the same continent, but uh, you guys get the point, right? I'm basically saying that you can drop off the car at any location that they choose to. Next, we have characteristics. What characteristics does this car have? Well, it is a turbocharged. In fact, the Q60 is twin turbo. Maybe I should have added that in there as, a, as a, an extra characteristic, right? We have twin turbo, and then we also have these uh, other features that we can add. 
right? So basically any characteristic that you create, you can add it to the car. So going back to the demo website, this is the actual short description. When they actually click on the actual car, that will show the long description. So this is something just to encourage them to rent the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and place the short description right here. All right. And then also we have the long description. So let's go back over here and I'm actually just gonna, you know, copy this and just duplicate it twice, right? There we go like that. But again, the long description is the description on the very next page. For example, this right here is the long description. So it's just giving more information about the car. All right. And then you also have some parameters where we can show cost per day in the search results. I believe we do have cost per day in the search results over here. So you guys can choose to have the cost per day. And then this is the total. So let's say, for example, they book for four days right here. Uh, this is the price for four days. However, you can also show the per day as well. So let's go back over here, per day. And if you guys do want to enable the request info, this actually creates a little box. I believe it's on the very next page and the user can actually request information about the car before they book it. Personally, I don't know how I feel about that because I would rather have them rent it and then we can talk about money later, right? And then here you have the custom starting from price. This text will display on the actual search results. So we have starting from, but you can change that to price from, right? So price from, right? Next, you have additional email. This will actually be an additional email that um, bookings are sent to your uh, inbox when someone books the actual car. Next, we have the custom image car status. We'll come back to that once we actually create the car. It might make a little bit more sense after we create it. Then we also have the custom page title where you can actually give a different page a title instead of the car name. So maybe you want to change it to something else and you can also adjust the position of the custom page title. And then we have the keywords meta tag and the description meta tag as well. This is strictly for SEO purposes where you might want to, you know, put in some information for the search engine. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll to the top here and click on save. After you guys save the car, it'll then greet you with a setup wizard. This will actually help you price your car. So for example, we have the rental cost non-refundable, the full damage cost refundable, and then the one that we created earlier was the rental car refundable. Now the cheapest one on this list is gonna have to be the rental car, the rental cost non-refundable. And websites like Expedia.com do have this where if you book a flight and it's non-refundable, it's usually cheaper than a, a booking that is refundable. So for the uh, non-refundable, it'll be $25 per day. We will change the uh, symbol to dollars. So if you're from any country in the world, we can go ahead and change the currency. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But for now, we'll just use the euro. But again, I'm American, so I will use the dollar in just a bit. And for the rental car refundable, I want to put something here more expensive than the non-refundable. So this will be $30. And then for the full damage cost, this will be something like $50. So let's summarize here. The rental cost non-refundable, which means they do not get a refund once they book, will be $25. If they do want a refund, then they will have to book the rental car refundable, and this will be $30. If they want the full coverage insurance, you know, that'll be $50 per day, right? So that's basically what we're referring to here. Now, you guys can also add the insurances in the extra services in the pro version, or you can add it this way, right? It kind of achieves the same exact results. So I'll go ahead and click on insert fares. All right, and now let's go ahead and scroll down here. Now, here we go. We have the rental cost non-refundable and the full damage cost, and then the rental car refundable. So all it does here is that it just multiplies the days to give it the accurate price. You guys can always adjust these prices to your liking. So if you guys want to charge more or less, um, we can go ahead and do that as well. I'll go ahead and change that back to 300. So as of right now, we have now created the actual pricing. Now, before we keep diving in on pricing, I quickly want to go back to the actual cars here and keep talking about the actual uh, car options, right? So let's click on car list and let's go back to infinity. Now, right here, we have manage distinctive features. Let's first click on manage distinctive features. This will actually propagate features about the car. For example, one of the most popular ones is license plates, right? Let's say, for example, we have three different infinities, right? Because we do have three different cars. 
but we need to distinct them from one another, right? We can't all lump them together because obviously they're gonna have different license plates, different insurances, different registrations, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and close all these right here and I'll give you a very ideal situation, all right? The first infinity that we have, the license plate number is 1111111, right? The second car license plate number is 2222222, right? And the car three license plate is 3333333, right? And you guys can add more if you guys choose to do so, like, you know, maybe, uh, maybe the miles, right? You'll say this is, you know, 4,000 or something like that. Um, that's up to you, you know, but most companies, they write it down because you'll have to constantly go back and update this every time, which can be a little tedious. So I'm just going to leave it as three license plates and then I'll click on save. All right, so now that I saved that, let's go ahead and click back on the manage distinctive features. All right, so we can see that this did save. Now, let's say for example, you guys have three different cars, right? But maybe one car has a scratch or maybe one car is, you know, maybe there's something different, right? Maybe they might have a damage or a dink or something, which is very, very common for rental cars. I mean, let's be honest, when you rent cars, you pretty much thrash them, right? So uh, let's now go ahead and add an image right here. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the custom image car status. I'll click on this. And then we're gonna upload that infinity. So I'll go ahead and select the file. So there's the car and I'll click on select. And then we'll scroll to the top and save it. We are now going to click on manage distinctive features. And let's say for car one, we want to create some sort of damage for the car, right? We'll click on damage and status. And now we're brought to this image. This is the image that we uploaded earlier. And if I click on part of this car right here, I can list the damage or something that I want to let them know, right? So for this specific part, the rim is scratched, right? The rim is scratched, right? And I can do this one more time. So over here under the window, we will put uh, the window is, window is ugly, right? And then for the front, maybe the front is like a fender bender, right? Fender bender. By doing this, you can distinct the difference from the cars from each other. You can also, you know, put license plates. I mean, you can pretty much put anything that you want right here as a custom field, right? But essentially right now, we're just basically saying that this is damage, okay? So once that's done, I'll click away from the page and then click on save. So now what I'm saying here is the infinity with this specific license has damage to it. So if I click on damage and statuses, we can then see that there's damage to this specific car. However, for car two and three, we don't have any damage, right? Now, if there is damage to another car, we can say, yeah, actually this part is broken. You know, this part's broken, right? And I can save that. So now what I'm saying is the first car had severe damage, right? The second car had a little, you know, problem right here. And the third car, you know, it's perfectly brand new, right? So we can actually, you know, report different damages for different cars. You guys with me? All right, awesome. All right, so let's go ahead now and click on save and close. So I went through the rental options over here, right? We went through these options, we went through cars, and now let's go ahead and keep tackling pricing. So I'll click on fares tables. All right, and here is a list of the cars, right? So we have the Alpha, we have the Hyundai, Infinity, and you know, this one right here. So let's just go ahead and click on Infinity. Now, since I have three columns, it actually displays it here at the bottom. So unfortunately, uh, two columns will display on the right side, but three columns puts it at the bottom. No big deal, whatever. Now here are the daily fares, right? So this is the actual daily cost of the car. Uh, you can also adjust this to hourly fares if you wanna do that, right? Um, I'm not really gonna go into that because a lot of cars don't rent on the hour. However, there are some that rents. So the fares tables allows you to adjust the daily fares, the extra hour charges and the hourly fares. Now let's find my infinity. Let's go ahead over here and find the infinity. Now, since I have three different columns, the plugin will put them here at the bottom, right? So we have three different options. We have the daily fares, which we've already adjusted. We have the extra hours charges, or we have the hourly fares. Now hourly fares is more ideal for very, very large trucks, right? So for example, if you are moving, uh, I believe some companies do offer uh, hourly basis for the actual trucks. So what we can do is we can set up hourly fares if you decide to do that. Uh, for example, right here we have hours, right? So uh, what hours is this car available to rent, right? Put from 10 
to seven. All right. Now, what is the price for these hours, right? Well, you know, uh, for the rental cost non-refundable, I'll put $20 for the full damage, 40, and then for the refundable, we'll put in 30. Remember, so the non-refundable, they don't get a refund, so obviously it's cheaper, and then the uh, car refundable is more expensive, and then this is like full coverage insurance, which is gonna be the most expensive. So let's click on insert hours. All right, so the next section is the table fares. This is where you guys can adjust the daily fares, the extra hours, or even offer hourly charges. Let's go ahead and find my infinity. Let's go ahead and click on the infinity. Now, if you guys do add three columns like I did earlier, you can see that the plugin will bring them down here. Now, let's say for example, you guys are renting a moving truck and you want to charge people on the hourly basis for that moving truck. You guys can always adjust it from daily fares to hourly fares, right? So for example, from, I'm assuming, what's the most they can rent, right? Maybe one to eight hours, right? One to eight hours. Now, what is the price for the rent rental cost non-refundable? Maybe $20, right? $20 per hour. The refundable will be 30, and then the full damage cost will be 50. So essentially what I'm saying here is you can rent our truck, right? I'm assuming this is a moving truck. You can rent it between one to eight hours, and the price of that will be $20 per hour, or $30 per hour or $50 per hour if you have the full coverage insurance. Now, this scenario is only for moving trucks because I think normal cars, uh, people don't rent by the hour, right? I mean, you you can, I think like Lamborghinis do in like uh, parts of California, but the normal renting company usually does daily fares. So I'll click on insert. And then that creates another table right here that you guys can use for hourlies. Now let's talk about extra hour charges. Now let's say for example, somebody wants to rent my infinity, right? But uh, let's say they return it late, right? Uh, what's, the, what's the fee for that, right? So let's go ahead and put from, you know, one to, we have zero or no, one to 24 hours, right? Now anything more than 24 hours, there's probably gonna be something else going on, right? You probably have to call them or, you know, there's gonna be a little bit more of some sort of direction, I'm sorry, interaction with you and the customer. Uh, but you can, you know, say this could be 48, right? So one to 48 hours, maybe after two days, you should give them a phone call and say, hey man, what is going on? Where's our car, right? So uh, if they are late on returning the car, what is the rate for the hourly charge? Well, up at 30, 50, and then 70. Okay, so they're gonna pay us a lot more uh, if they, I think it was 40, right? 40, 50, or yeah, 70. They're gonna pay us a little bit more if they return the car later. So let's click on insert. All right, there we go. So now we have our extra hours charges applied. So that's pretty much it for the fair tables. If you guys do have any other questions, feel free to ask me. Um, again, this plugin is very dynamic and there's a lot you can do. It's very easy to get confused, but just do your best and stick with me. All right, let's keep going here. Next, we have special prices. Unfortunately, special prices are in the pro version only. This allows you to create special prices on specific days or discounts on specific days. Over here, we have the drop off and pick off uh, fees. Uh, this is essentially where you want to charge someone an extra fee for dropping it at a specific location. We have the out of hour fees, and sorry to say, this is also a pro version. And then we also have the fares overview. This just gives you a big overview about what's going on right here. So uh, if someone rents something, these will actually turn orange, I believe. And once it turns red, that means there is no more of that car available. Okay, so right now we're looking at the alpha, but we can go ahead and look at the other ones, right? Like the infinity and say, you know, what is, you know, is the infinity available? How many are being rented? This is where you can view all that information. All right, so that is pretty much it for the pricing. All right, next we have orders. Now, if you guys do get an order, they'll be displayed right here. All right, next we have calendar. The calendar is where you guys can get a better idea and you know a better look and overview about what's going on with your cars. So for example, uh, you can see where the car is being rented. You can see uh, all this information right here. Once it's rented, you guys can actually click on the actual, uh, the dates, and that will actually show the customer who's renting it and also when they are returning it. You guys can also assign this to a specific customer as well. Let's say, for example, someone did not want to use your website. That happens quite often. 
let's now create a booking for a customer. All right, so Daryl wants to rent my Infinity from July 26th to July 27th. He's gonna get here at 12 o'clock and uh, he's also gonna drop it off at 12 o'clock, right? Now, where is Daryl going to pick up this car? Well, Daryl's gonna pick it up at the Las Vegas Center. And he's also gonna drop it off at the Las Vegas Center. Here's the payment method. Now we don't have any payment methods as of right now. No problem, we'll always, you know, we'll do that a little bit later. Now, if you guys do have customers that have signed up to your website, you can assign a specific customer. However, if you guys don't have one, you guys will have to create one, right? So this will be Daryl Wilson, right? Here you guys can search by, you know, by pin or by name, but since we don't have any customers, now obviously nothing's gonna be there, right? Uh, here we go for the email. All right, this is where like you're on the phone, you're like, hi, sir, can I get your information, you know, and all that stuff, and what's your address, sir, you know? Uh, road, all right. Country, right, probably America, right? I mean, there are a lot of people traveling from other parts of the world, and uh, they might, um, you know, they might be from other parts of the world, and these companies do get that quite a bit. Here we have the website rates or we can set a custom rate. Maybe this is like your homie or something, your boy, but we're just going to select a th this rate right here. All right, and then click on save reservation. All right, so we have now booked the reservation for our uh, clients. And here I'll click on view details. And we can always go over here and click on the customer check-in and this will generate the PDF. So now we're gonna download the check-in document and this is something that your customer is gonna get, right? So it's gonna have like the receipts and everything else. And you can print this and you can also email it to your customer. So over here, you'll click on the send customer email and this document will go directly to their email inbox. All right, so that's pretty much what the order list is. I'm sorry, the calendar and how you can create reservations, right? Now, since I created that reservation, you guys will now see that this turns orange. This is basically informing you that this is being rented, like something's being rented there, right? And again, if this turns red, then I believe that the car that was trying to be rented is sold out or rented out and there's nothing more available. You guys got that? All right, well, let's keep going. You guys are doing very, very good, all right? So uh, we went through orders or the uh, calendar. Now let's click on overview. Here's an overview. This is basically showing you what has been rented and you guys can get more information about your cars and you know what has been rented and the license plates and all that cool stuff, right? Over here, we have the dashboard. This is just like your general dashboard. Whenever you guys do log into your website, it'll usually bring you to this specific dashboard. Next, we have management. And I believe management, everything here is in the pro version, like the customers, the coupons, However, I believe the graph statistics, no, that, that's also in the pro, <laughs> you know? So yeah, uh, all of the advanced features as well, these are, I believe, available in the pro version. Cron jobs are amazing. Now, uh, what cron jobs are is, let's say, for example, somebody books something and they return the car, you can send them an automatic follow-up email to say, hey, thank you so much, uh, can you please come back? Or let's say, for example, someone has rented the car and you want to remind them that the car has to be returned tomorrow, right? You can set all that up in cron jobs. So cron jobs are actually pretty cool, right? This is just tracking. This is pretty much just saying like who has rented and so on and so forth, right? Now let's go ahead and talk about the global, right? Global is actually pretty important. So let's first click on configuration. All right, so now let's talk about the global options. Now, to be quite honest, the global options are probably the most complicated part of this entire tutorial. So get your thinking caps on and let's do this. First, let's go over here to shop and rentals. Now, this is just the general settings, right? So for example, if you want to enable renting on your website, you would go ahead and have that checked. If you want it disabled, you would disable it. Maybe you're on like a break or something, or you're just not working or something like that. Uh, here we have the admin email, the sender email, and then here we have the always open, right? So you can choose to have your uh, shop always open or you can select a specific time. You can also override these settings in the actual location um, listing where you can create the time and override it or you can choose the global option. It's really up to you. Uh, it just really depends on how many shops that you have. But I'll go ahead and just select something like 10 o'clock and we were also open till, I don't know, two or something like that. 
Here we also have the force pickup and drop off time. If you do wanna have force pickup and force drop off time, you can always go ahead and set that here. That's basically saying that the customer must pick up the car at this time and they must drop it off at this time as well. Now, earlier in the video, I did mention the times. So if you guys want to change it to hours, which uh, in USA, we use AM and PM. Uh, other countries, not so much. I think we're probably one of the only few countries out there who use uh, this time format. Also, uh, for the date format, in the United States as well, we use the month, day, and year. Other countries, like in Asia, they actually swap it. So make sure if you are in America to put month, day, and year, because that would be, uh, that would make the most sense. And then you have some other general options here where you can, you know, uh, auto assign car units, enable coupons. Uh, you can choose to have pins and so on and so forth. These options here are a little bit technical and just depending on how accurate you want your website to be, you can go ahead and adjust those settings there. All right, let's go ahead and scroll up and then we'll go ahead and click on save. Now on the right side, we have some additional options, right? These are the search and rental parameters. For example, the first one is the minimum number of days of rental. So how many days can the actual customer rent the car? Uh, usually one is acceptable, but if you want to say, you know what, you must rent the car for at least two days in order to book. You can go ahead and enable that there. Days in advance for booking. I would say usually one day is good because this actually uh, restricts same day booking. If you don't, you know, if you don't want to have the days in advance booking, you can just leave that blank. And that means people can book on the same day. The next one is the maximum date in the future. So uh, let's say for example, someone wants to book three years into the future. Uh, you're going to say no, you know, the, the latest that will let you book is two years, right? Or maybe even one year, right? I mean, that makes more sense. Uh, more than one year. That's a little weird. You know, maybe someone might book a car two years in advance. I don't know, but uh, you can go ahead and uh, select that option there. Here you have the choose pickup location, cars, category filter. This is for the actual filter on the actual search page of the homepage. You can adjust the search here, uh, filter by characteristics. I'm not sure about that. That basically means that earlier in the video, I showed you guys how it's to add turbos as the characteristic. That's basically saying they can filter by air condition or turbo or something, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. So I'm just going to leave that unchecked. All right, and for the rest of the options, they're pretty self-explanatory. So I'm gonna click on save and move on to the next section. So that is shops and rentals. Now let's talk about prices and payments. So the currency name, I'm gonna put USD. I'll put in the symbol of the dollar. The transaction currency code, I'm gonna put in USD. Here you have the number of decimals, the decimal separator, and then the thousand separator. On the right side, we have price tax included, which basically applies the tax. You can choose to show the tax in the summary only, you know, if you don't want it on the, you know, on the actual details page. Here we have the pay entire amount, or they can leave a deposit of something like 50%, and that would give them access to rent the car. And the payment transaction name, you would wanna change this to something like your website, right? Like Daryl Tutorial, Daryl's Car Rental or something like that. So you'd wanna put your company name. All right, and click on save. Now, some companies actually do leave a deposit. So if you do want to leave a deposit, you can say that you must leave a deposit of at least 50%. And then when you arrive to our establishment, then you'll go ahead and pay us the other 50%, which some companies do, you know, I've, I've seen that before. So if you want to, you know, add that in, that's really up to you. Next, let's click on views and layouts. So next we have the views and layouts. Now on the right side, we have preferred colors. These colors can influence the uh, search page and also the details page. Uh, for example, for elements with background, we can go ahead and adjust this. Changes like purple, the font color will do black. Hovered elements will do like a green or something. And also the font color will change it to like white. And for the headings and details, we can also change that to something like teal or something. Just to give you guys an example. And uh, then we'll click on save. Now, once I adjust these settings here and I go back to our website and we search, uh, you will then see that now the colors are different and stuff like that. This is created, so this will actually match your branding. So if you're like a company with like a red brand, uh, those options would apply for that, right? Also, I'll go ahead and select this date here and click on search. And now you'll see that we have the 
I guess the teal section, and then also this influences the buttons. And when I hover over it, that also influences a lot of the colors. So that section there is basically allowing you to uh, change the colors to match your brand. So let's go back to the Vic Red Car, and then go back to Global. Now I'm gonna change this back, but uh, yeah, that's how you guys can you know adjust the actual color. But uh, those colors are really tacky and ugly, so I'm just gonna change them back and click on Save. Now on the left side over here, we can see that we can choose some more technical settings like calendars, first day of the week, thumbnail size, number of months to show. Um, over here, we have the customer email, customer PDF, customer check-in, PDF invoice, and CSS overrides. Now, if you guys are not familiar with HTML, I would recommend actually giving this work off to a developer. Now, this is actually pretty important information. Um, the developer actually created these PDF forms. And on this line of code right here, uh, right here, uh, this is where you would actually enter in your contract or whatever it is that you want to enter. Now, once we get to conditional text, I will give you guys another example of how to edit this. But um, I actually recommend going to something like upwork.com or fiverr.com, search for a WordPress developer and just ask them saying, hey, you know, we actually have all this code for the email templates. Can you please help us, you know, with this? And you guys can do it for like maybe 50 bucks. I'll show you guys how to do it yourself but I would recommend to hire someone that knows a little bit more HTML because this here is HTML and I didn't really want to start teaching you guys HTML because obviously this video can get uh, hours and hours long, right? So, uh, but I'll come back to this. I'll come back to all this and, and we'll discuss where you can customize this. And then below that we have the opening page text and the closing page text. I'll be very honest, I believe this is on the emails not really sure where exactly this appears. I actually looked for quite some time and I could not find it. All right, but let's go ahead and click on save here. Now let's go over here to orders and companies. Now this is essentially where you can add in your logo. This is very important because this will display on PDFs and also email check-ins. So for the company logo right now, they're using the default vicrentcar.png, but you guys will need to select your own logo, obviously, right? All right, so I put in my Kobe Coffee logo right there. On this section, this is more for iCal Calendar. So if you guys do want to integrate it, here's some additional options on uh, iCal Calendar. And if you guys are using advertisements and you want to track the code, this is where you can edit the HTML code for the tracking and also for the conversion code. Again, I would hire a developer if you guys are not sure because a lot of this is using bare HTML code. All right, now once this is done, you will then go to the top here and click on Save. After we've done that, you guys can notice that the logo is now being applied. This is also being applied to the emails. So any emails that are now sent will have your own personal custom logo on all of your PDFs and all of your emails. Pretty cool. Now let's go over here and click on conditional text. Now conditional texts are probably the most complicated part of this video and I will do my best to make it as simple as possible to understand. This is actually a very powerful feature and the amount you can do with it is pretty overwhelming, but let me just give you some brief examples of how you would use conditional text. First, let's go ahead and click on conditional text. Now a very popular one would probably be a contract, right? So basically what I'm saying here is I want to create a contract, but I want to create a contract for specific cars, right? Maybe someone's renting a, a limousine and that contract would probably be a little bit different than a car, right? So right here, I'll put in car and we will put in, uh, let's see, contract car. So what I'm saying here is that this contract is specifically for cars. And right here, you guys would actually go ahead and put in the contract. So this is the contract contract for the car, right? Now, we've created a contract for this car, right? Obviously, this is going to be a lot larger. You're probably going to have bullet points and like, you know, number one, number two, like rule, you know, and it's going to be very, very large, right? But um, we need to actually set when do we want this contract to be applied? Well, over here, we have add a rule, right? So let's click on add a rule. But before I do that, I want to change that. Well, there you go. <laughs> change it to rule, right? All right. So let's click on add a rule. Now, here we have a list of options, right? We have the day of the weeks, the days, days to arrival, options and extras, rental dates, and so on and so forth. Now, what I'm saying here is I want this contract to appear when? Well, let's click on car and click on add rule. Now, if the actual customer decides to rent this specific car, which is the Infinity, 
Then I want the customer to receive this specific contract. You guys with me? So let me repeat that. If the customer rents the Infinity car, then they will then receive this specific contract. Specific, specific contract. Okay. Now let me give you guys a more advanced method of how to apply this. Let's say, for example, the customer rented the Infinity, but they rented it on a specific holiday or a specific day that was unique, right? Maybe it was different. Maybe it's the weekend. We can go ahead and also add a rule. And this would be days of the week. And I'll click on add a rule. Now what I'm saying here is if the customer books on Monday and they book the Infinity, then they will receive this contract. If they do not book, I mean, if both conditions are not met, then this contract will not be received. You guys got that? So let me let me go ahead and reiterate here. Uh, if they book on Monday and they book the Infinity, then they will receive this contract. If they book on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or whatever days, they will not receive this contract. So essentially, these are conditions that must be met in order to receive this contract. Now, days of the week, obviously, that's a pretty advanced example, but I'm just going to get rid of this, right? Let's just do something more simple. Let's just say infinity, right? So now that we have this contract for the infinity, let's click on save. Now, let me give you a more advanced example that might be practical. Let's say, for example, a customer rents the infinity, but they rent it at a specific location that might have a different contract than another location. For example, over here, I'll click on add a rule. And then we're going to find locations, right? So here is the location and I'll click on add rule. Now stay with me here. So what I'm saying here is I'll go ahead and find a location. I'll click on Las Vegas center. Now, if the customer books the car rental, the infinity from the Las Vegas center only, then they will receive this specific contract. You guys with me? Now, if they book the Infinity from another location, they will not receive this contract because both conditions must be met in order for the person to receive this specific contract. You guys got that? Now, you guys can combine as many rules as you want and get very advanced. So this form actually can be extremely dynamic. I mean, you guys can add another rule saying, uh, for example, on the rental dates, right? Or let's see here, on the booking dates. You can add in another booking date saying, well, if they book from the Las Vegas center and they book the infinity on these specific dates, then they can get this contract, right? So as you guys can tell, this is a very dynamic form and there's a lot you can do with it, but I'm just going to only assign car for now. You know, I'm just going to make this a little bit more simple, but I just want to demonstrate that this form can be extremely advanced over here. I'll click on save. All right, and I'll click on save and close. So we have this sh contract right here, but we need to apply this contract. So over here, I'll go ahead and copy this short code, right? We're going to copy this short code. So now that we created the contract, where do we want the contract to appear? Well, we can make it appear in the customer email, the customer PDF, the customer check-in or the PDF invoice. Let's go ahead and select the customer PDF here. And I'll just demonstrate what we're talking about. Now here we have the rented vehicle. I'm going to put the contract right next to the actual item name. The reason why I'm doing this is because if the customer did rent the infinity, I want them to view the contract. Now, let me reiterate here. If they rented something else like the uh, Hyundai, then this contract will not display because remember the conditions must be met in order for that to display. So that's how you guys can apply conditional text to these specific template files. Now you guys can add more, right? So maybe for example, you guys want to add in another one here. I'll click on conditional text. Now let's say, for example, someone booked a car, but you wanted to give them a message before they actually visited the center. Maybe they need to have their driver's license. Maybe they need to have their passport or their insurance or something that they need to bring. And you just want to remind them. This will be a reminder under the ad rule. Now we have a few options here, right? We can filter by days or we can even do rental dates. You know, there's various ways on how to do this, you know, and it doesn't really matter what you select. You can pretty much use anything to sort of meet your conditions, right? Now, just remember with conditional text, you guys can pretty much mix and match these conditions to pretty much meet any sort of criteria that you want. And then I'll select days of the week and click on add a rule. Now, what I'm saying here is, you know what? If people book any of these days, which is, you know, all the days, then they're going to get this message, right? 
Now you can, you know, customize this a little bit more. Like for example, let's say on Monday, you guys have a different office hour or something or on Sunday or Saturday, you can send them a message to say, Hey, if you guys come on Saturday or Sunday, we're closed, go around the back or something and you can get the keys or something. So you can adjust this message to be set on specific days. Now here we have type and we can get a little bit more customizable, right? So we have pick up, drop off and pick up and drop off. That means if they decide to pick up the car, you want to give them this message. If they are dropping it off, then they will also get this message or you can just do both, right? But uh, I'll just go ahead and leave it as both and select all of the days. So let's just reiterate here. If they book on any of these days, which are all the days and they pick up and drop off, I want to give them this message, right? Makes sense. I mean, I think pick up would make more sense because then I'm saying you will only get this message when you pick something up or you can say drop off, right? And this can even be a coupon code. You know, we can even turn this into a coupon code or like a thank you so much for coming once they drop it off saying, oh, you were the greatest customer. Or if they pick up, you can say, hey, sir, please, before you come, bring your, you know, bring your license or something like that. So uh, bring your license, all right? And then I will click on save and close. All right, now here is the actual code. So I'll go ahead and copy this and I will put this on the customer email. So right when they actually book, I want them to get reminded that they will have to bring their driver's license, which makes a lot of sense, right? So for the customer info. All right, so you guys with me? All right, great. So you guys are doing very, very good. This is probably the hardest part of the video. Now I wanna talk about contracts, right? So how do you guys create a contract for your website? Well, we need to do that with conditional text. So over here, conditional text, and this is gonna be the contract. All right, and then this would obviously be the main contract here for all cars. And this is the contract for all the cars. All right, now let's add a rule. Now I'll select rental dates, right? And click on add a rule. And this is gonna pretty much apply for my entire business. So I'm just gonna say, you know what? Um, we're just going to set this really far in the future. So anyone booking for the next two years will see our contract, right? That makes sense. Uh, again, you guys can use this however which way you want. And uh, yeah, but I'll click on save and close. So now let's go ahead and paste this contract, right? So I wanna give them a copy of this contract every single time someone actually rents any of our cars. Over here under the views and layouts, we're gonna go back to that one section where I told you we're gonna go back. And under the customer PDF, uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to insert this short code into the actual HTML file. Now we're gonna go to line 134, right? And this right here, this line, this is just demo text, okay? So we don't need to really use this. So I'm gonna click on backspace and then press enter. I will then go to line 134. I will hit the tab button and then I'll paste that in there like that. Now, what I'm saying here is this, a short code will appear with this specific conditional text. Hope that makes sense, right? So basically anyone who books the car in the next two years will automatically get this contract in their PDF file. Makes sense. And you guys can also use other short codes in these emails as well. Here I'll click on save and write source code. All right, so it has successfully been updated. So let's go ahead and recap. What I've done here is I've taken a contract and I've applied it to every single car that is rented, right? So I want them to all get a contract when they rent any of our cars. Now make sure to have this short code handy because we're actually gonna use this short code one more time and we're gonna use this for people to uh, agree to our terms of condition, right? Before they actually book. But uh, now that we've talked about conditional text, Hopefully that was easy. You know, uh, again, the conditional text, there's a lot you can do with it. Uh, if you guys do have any more questions about conditional text, feel free to let me know. I did my best to uh, teach this part and this is probably the hardest part of the entire video. So uh, congratulations if you guys got it. It actually took me a few times. I actually had to hop on the call with a developer and they did help me out and teach me everything. So it does take a little bit time to get used to. Now we're pretty much almost done with the actual free version. We have translations and custom fields. Now, if you guys do want to enable multiple languages on your website, it's really, really easy. All you'll do is go to the settings over here and go to general. You will then select a different language. In this case, I'll put Afrikaans and click on save changes. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back to English and then click on save changes. 
So essentially what I've done here is I've loaded two languages, right? We have English and we also have the secondary language. Now I want to go back to that area and now we will have the option to use that specific language. So for translations, you will now see the Afrikaans, right? Now, which part of the website do we want to translate? Well, we can go ahead and pick right here. And for example, we'll go ahead and load the cars, right? And uh, for example, we have the, let's find the, uh, let's find the infinity. We have the infinity right here. If we want to change the translation, we'll click on Afrikaans and then we'll go down to the infinity. And this is where you can enter in your country's characters or the translation for that specific product. It is a lot of work. I'm not going to lie, but if you guys are running a multilingual website, you guys can use this uh, service or you guys can also use G translate. I will leave that plugin in the description below this video. It might actually be a little bit more easier. I'm not sure. Cause again, plugins might not work with other plugins and it's hard for me to really know everything. So, uh, I'll give you guys a one click solution, uh, to translate your whole website. And I'll leave that video in the description below of this video. All right. But that's how you guys can enable translations. Payment methods are not available. They're only available in the, in the pro version. I think I did cover that. And now we have custom fields. Now for the custom fields in the free version, you guys only have the option to the, I agree to the terms and conditions. And for this one right here, you guys can just go ahead and paste in your uh, terms and conditions page. And this would be a page that you can create. Now, I don't think you guys can actually use the short code. I thought you could, but you know what? I think you can only use. Now, if you guys do have the terms and conditions, you'll go ahead and paste the link right here. And this is the terms and conditions they must select in order to rent any of your cars. Now, all you have to do is insert the page for your terms and conditions. If you guys don't know how to do that, or you're not sure, let me just quickly show you over here under plus new, we'll go to page and I'll just simply create a terms and conditions page. And this will be the link that people will have to check in order to agree to the terms of service. All right. So this is the terms and conditions. You must be awesome. And then I'll click on publish and publish. Obviously you want to put your rules like rule number one, rule number two, you know, this is the terms and conditions page. And then you'll just take that link right there and copy it. And that will be the link that you uh, insert. So let's go back to Vic rents car and then we'll go to global and custom fields. We'll click on the, I agree to the terms and then we'll paste that in there and we are done. And then we'll click on save. All right. So at this point, we have pretty much gone through all of the options in the free version. Now the pro version is pretty simple to understand. If you guys do understand everything in the free version, the pro version is a piece of cake because all it does is just have a little bit more extra features. But now that we've actually completed all the general settings, let's go ahead now and have a quick crash course and see if this is actually working. I should probably change that actual, uh, that, I think that text right there is too light. huh? I think I can change that in my options. Now here on the pickup dates, I will select the 25th to the 29th, right? And we're picking it up at 11 AM and we'll also drop it off at 11 AM. We can also select the category. Remember that, but, um, we've already selected the infinity B in the car. So again, this is just, if you want to create an additional filter here, I will click on search and there is our beautiful infinity. I mean, that is a nice car. I mean, I'm so, I'm so glad that my car is so amazing. You know, they don't sell this in like any other country, but USA, I'm pretty lucky. And uh, once we are here, we can see the Kara six, right? And the infinity, the car, we have some short description here. I'll click on continue. We have the long description. We have the car. We have additional pictures of the car. There it is. I will close that. Now here we have three options, right? We have the non-refundable, the rental car refundable, and then the full damage cost refundable. All right. I'll go ahead and select the rental car refundable and click on book. Now here is an order summary of our booking and we can enter a coupon code. We're actually in the free version. We can't, <laughs> sorry. Uh, here we go. Daryl Wilson. And for the country I'll put, uh, who should we give a shout out to? Uh, we'll put, we'll put Bulgaria. We got Bulgaria in the house today. And then my date of birth, we'll just put something like 1997, 30, something like that. And I agreed to the terms and conditions. Now, if I click on this page right here, it's going to open up that page. You must be awesome. Remember that? So there you go. And then I will click on check and click on confirm order. 
and voila. Now the actual customer will get an email and you will also get an email notifying you of a new booking. Here the customer can review the order by clicking on this page. And there we go. So we can see that the uh, car has been confirmed. Now I believe you guys can actually automatically bring them to the uh, thank you page in the advanced options. Let me, let me double check that. I believe you can. So I believe in the payments and prices, I need to select pay entire amounts and that will basically uh, confirm the booking. All right, guys. Well, that is pretty much it for the free version. If you guys do have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get to them. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next section. We'll be talking all about the pro version and how to integrate payment gateways onto the website. All right, welcome back. So as you guys can tell, the plugin's pretty simple to work with, right? After probably like an hour or two, you guys can definitely get the hang of it. Now in this next section, we're gonna talk about the pro version. As you guys notice, the free version is pretty limited, right? You know, they have a lot of parts where it says you have to upgrade to the pro and stuff like that. So in this next section, I'll show you how to uh, use all of the features in the pro version. I'll also show you how to integrate payment gateways so you can start accepting credit card payments on your rental website. You guys ready? Let's get started. All right, in this part of the video, we'll be talking all about the pro version of the Vic plugin. Now the Vic plugin has a pro version and with the pro version, you get a little bit more features. Now I have two websites here and on one that we just worked on, this does not have the pro version on it. And on this one, this does have a pro version installed. Now, if you guys do wanna purchase the pro version, you guys can go to vicwp.com uh, over here under plugins. I'll also leave a link to this plugin in the description of this video. Uh, I'm not an affiliate, so if you guys do use it, I don't make any commissions, uh, but this is the actual plugin that you guys will need. It is called Vic Rent Car. What this plugin does is it just gives you more features, right? Now I'm gonna go through each of these features and I'll explain to you uh, what they do and how they can you know, improve your current uh, car rental website. Now I also do want to let you guys know that uh, this price right here does not include the payment gateway. You guys will also have to purchase the payment gateway for the Stripe integration, which is about another, I think it's 60 euros. So in total, uh, if you guys do want the uh, pro version and the Stripe integration, it'll be about 200 euros. And as of right now, I think it's around like $200 or something like that, right? But let me just go ahead and quickly go ahead and go through these features and explain to you what they all are. Now I'll go over here to my dashboard. All right, now this one already has it installed. If you guys do want to actually install the actual Vic Booking plugin, uh, first let's just let me show you guys where you would uh, install it. Now the pro version is not a plugin, it's just a license code. So over here, you'll click on upgrade to pro. And if you scroll down, you will then see that you can paste the actual license key. You guys can get your license key by going to the website and logging in. Once you guys log in, it'll give you a license key and you simply go over here and you paste that license key in here and that gives you access to the pro version, right? And if you guys are really running like a big car rental website, you should really upgrade to the pro because I mean, let's be honest, you know, it unlocks payment gateways, customer management, coupons, uh, a whole lot of stuff, right? So let me go ahead and walk you guys through all of the pro features. Let's go over here to Vic Rental. Now I wrote these down here because there were so many and I wanted to just go over uh, one by one. So I wrote these down right here. The first one is restrictions. So I'll click on restrictions. Now what restrictions do is they basically allow you to restrict specific dates. For example, we have this one called holiday. And I actually created a new restriction called holiday. What this does is this basically refrains people from renting from a specific period, right? We have, uh, you know, you can set these specific days and this is ideal for holidays, right? Because maybe you don't wanna rent cars on Christmas, you know, or Thanksgiving or Halloween you can restrict specific dates right here. And then there's more options where you can set days close to arrival. And then on the right side, we have some other options where you can restrict drop-offs and pickups for specific dates. For example, the weekend, the weekdays close to departure and the weekdays close to arrival, right? So if you're saying, you know what, you guys cannot pick up cars on Friday. And this one is you cannot drop off the cars on Monday. And then we have another option where you can force the arrival weekday, right? So this is basically saying um, you have to actually pick up the car on this day to this day. So all it does here is it just basically creates a little bit more, um, I guess you wanna say restrictions on the car rentals. Next, let's go to the next option, which is the car options. 
Now, car options are essentially add-ons for your products. For example, if you want to offer premium seat covers, maybe you guys purchase something specifically for that car, uh, you can go ahead and add that as an add-on, right? And there's a few options where you can charge it per day, or you can say, you know what, this is a one-time fee of $20. You can also assign the tax rate that we created earlier, and you can assign that to the actual add-on as well. And then there's other options right here where you have it like always selected and stuff like that. And you can also assign the seat covers or any add-ons to any car that you'd want. For example, we have the premium seat covers, right? And here I selected all of the cars. So that means that all of the cars have the option to select the premium seat covers when they check out, right? So it's just more ways for us to make money. So that's an example of the car options. Next, let's talk about special pricing. So here we have special prices. Now, let's say, for example, you guys want to offer specific prices for specific seasons, right? Maybe there's a season where people travel more or they don't travel more and you want to offer either a discounted rate or you want to charge them more. Uh, we can do that with this feature. So for example, let's say on the 26th to the 30th on these days, right? Or we can just select all of them, right? Uh, we'll go ahead and scroll down. And we can also choose to add specific weekdays in this season as well, right? So season is referring to like a long period. So you can select specific weekdays in this specific season. And for the special price name, we can put something like promotion, right? Or promo. Next on the right side, we can choose whether we want to have an increased charge, maybe an increased charge of something like 5%, or you can say, you know what? I wanna offer a discount instead. So for these specific dates right here, I wanna offer a 5% discount. And this can be like a promotion. This can be uh, a fee. It can pretty much be everything. You can also assign these specific promotions to specific cars, right? So let's say, for example, you want to select the promotion. Maybe you want to get people to rent a specific car, right? Maybe you're saying, you know, I really want people to rent these two cars because no one's really renting them, you know, and I really got to get rid of them. So I want to offer a discount for these two cars. And on the next section, we have type of price. We did create a few of the type of prices. So you can go ahead and add those type of prices there. Remember earlier how we created three, we had three different selections where we had like the non-refundable and so on and so forth. You can add the discount for those specific prices. And then also you can set it for specific uh, areas as well. So for example, if you want this only to apply to Las Vegas, you can go ahead and apply the discount only for those cars during those days in Las Vegas. So overall, I think this feature is actually really helpful. This can actually encourage people to either uh, rent out cars that are not being rented. And during busy seasons, you can have like a maybe a five to 10% increase on your cars in order to make more profit. So I'll go ahead and click on save. Next, let's talk about the pickup and drop off. Pickup and drop off fees. Now I do like this, you know, uh, for example, we will go ahead and click on new right here. Let's say, for example, you guys wanted to charge a fee for people picking up cars. Now, there's a few options, right? We can either choose to charge a one-way fee or we can charge a fee for specific pickup locations and drop-off locations. Um, for example, we'll first just do pickup location for Las Vegas and Paris, right? So I want to incur a fee if the user uh, picks up from Las Vegas or if they drop off from Paris Place, right? Uh, you guys can also change this as well by having a one-way fee, but you would apply the fee right here and you can choose to either make this a daily cost or a one-time fee. That means, for example, let's say they visited, or I'm sorry, they rented for five days. Um, you would charge the daily cost. That means they'd be charged $50 in total. If you had this unchecked, they would be only charged $10. Now you can also select a one-way fee. A one-way fee does the same thing, except this is just basically charging them a fee regardless, right? This is just a fee on your website saying, uh, this is a one-way fee of $10 and this applies for any combination of pickup or drop-off locations. And of course, you guys can make this daily, right? And then on the right side, you can incur a tax or a fee to this specific fee as well. All right, makes sense. All right, let's keep going. Here, click on save. Next, we have the out of hours. Under pricing, I'll click on out of hours. Now, out of hours is actually a very interesting feature and I actually had a one-on-one -on -one call with the developer and after we talked about it, I finally understood, right? Now, this can be used in various ways. For example, you can actually charge someone for picking up a car out of the hour 
and you can charge them for bringing the car after hours. Let's say, for example, the customer wanted to pick up the car at six in the morning, but you guys aren't open. You guys can say, you know what? We will let you pick up the car at six in the morning, but we will have to charge you a fee. That's where this feature comes into place, right? So I'll put like early bird, early bird, and the time uh, is gonna be from, you know, we'll do 4 a.m. to something like uh, 9 a.m., right? The pickup charge will be $5, and also the drop-off charge. Here you have the max charge, which is saying, uh, this is the max charge that we're gonna charge. Now, these times right here are for pickup only. So what we can do is we can make multiple of these, right? We can make it for pickup, we can make it for drop-off, and we can also do pickup and drop-off, right? So you can have various uh, factors in here, and there's various ways on how to charge your customers. So basically I'm saying here with this option is if you pick up or you drop off the car, from four in the morning to 9 a.m., we will then charge you a fee of $5, right? So that's basically what this option is referring to. And then also we can select a tax rate for this fee as well. And we can select the weekdays, the cars, and also the locations. So I really do like this diversity of options right here. You can get very customizable and you can also have as many rules as you want. So that is the out of hours fees, right? So over here, I will click on save. And of course, you guys can make more, right? So we do only have one right here, but I mean, you guys can make as many as you want, right? So under new, this will be like late night, right? And this can be something like if they drop off the car at nine at night till, uh, let's see, nine at night till, I'm sorry, wait, wait, wait. Had that backwards there, hold on. <laughs> Here's, I'm not on the, uh, the other time zone as well. So uh, 20 to 23, right? So I think that's nine to 12 o'clock, right? So we can incur a fee for this. And this is a drop-off fee of $20, right? Then there you go. And for the weekdays, I'll select all of them and click on save. So you can see here how we can have a diversity of rules to pretty much meet any one situation. Now let's go over here to orders. I'm sorry, not orders, the management. And let's go through these pro options. So I'll click on customers. And here's a list of our customers, right? Now, when people sign up on your website, they'll get their customer information stored right here where we can see their order list and everything. So let's say, for example, uh, obviously you can see here, I've been planning this tutorial for a long time. Uh, Daryl has booked all of these cars, right? We can go ahead and look at Daryl's booking. We can also open this little arrow right here and we can get more information on the actual booking. We can also go ahead and download his contract to see what has happened. You know, like maybe they said, hey, I didn't agree to this or I'd agree to that. We can view all of the details from the customers. We can view their contract. We can see their bookings and everything, right? So uh, that is pretty much what the um, order list is. It's just basically showing the customer and everything that they have ordered. So that's pretty much what the customers are. The customer section allows you to allow customers to register on your website. You can view their PIN. You can also view their orders and also you can see the contracts. So it makes everything a lot more transparent. And to be practical, you probably do need to have this feature if you are running a real car rental website because you need to view the customer's information. Next, let's talk about coupon codes. So over here, I'll click on coupons and coupons are pretty easy. You guys can see I was already messing with this, but let's just make a new coupon. So the coupon code will put Patty, right? Now this coupon code type, this can be permanent or a gift, right? But I'll make this permanent. Now you can select a percentage or a dollar amount. I'll do a percentage of 80% off. This applies to all of the vehicles and what dates do you want it to be, uh, to be active, right? Well, I'll say, you know what? This sale is only gonna go on from August 1st to, let's see here, August 7th. And the minimum order total is they must order, you know, at least $30 or something, you know, I don't know. You'd put the minimum order total in order for that discount to be applied. So that's how you guys can create coupons. And during checkout, they can enter this uh, at checkout and get the discount. So I'll go ahead and click on save. All right, cool. So you can see that we got, uh, we got two coupon codes right here. Pretty cool. Now let's go to the next option, which is graph and statistics. Here you guys can get a little bit more information about your sales, right? So we can see how much we have sold and there's just a little bit more information here. So next we have graph and statistics, right? And here you guys can get a view of the sales, right? We have the sale date where you can filter here to see you know, who's renting the cars. You guys can also filter. For example, if you wanna see how a specific car is performing, you can go ahead and select that car and just get the information 
for like maybe the Q60 Infinity, but uh, obviously we have got no booking, so it's not gonna show anything at all. So any car right here that is on your list, you can go ahead and see if people are booking it and just get a little bit more information on all of your orders. Next, let's go over here and let's click on reports first. Reports is just another area where you guys can get more reports, right? Like your revenue. So I'll go ahead and click on revenue. We can load a specific date over here to the 10th, filter all the cars, and then it'll give us some information about like how much cars were rented. Here it says cars sold. You know, we didn't sell any cars, but I guess, you know, renting cars sold, I don't know, same thing. But uh, it just gives you a big analytics here of all of your sales and the performance of your overall store. You guys can also export this as a CA. You guys can also export this as a CSV in case you guys want to use this for like, I don't know, QuickBooks or some other accounting purpose. And one of the last features is called the scheduled cron jobs. Let's click on scheduled cron jobs here. Now I've already obviously created a few different cron jobs. This right here is an email. And with this cron job, you'll see that I can actually send specific email reminders to people. For example, here I have the cron job name, which is email, right? Now here we have class file. So this can either be a webhook notification, an email reminder, an iCal integration, or a backup creator. So you can have the website actually create backups for your website and also send automated emails. Now, when you want this email sent, right? Here we have recurrence, right? We have twice daily, once a day, once every other day, and so on and so forth, right? So we can go ahead and send out this email uh, any any time that we want pretty much, but I think once a day is good. Now the reminder type, here we have pickup reminder, remaining balance payment reminder, or after drop-off purchase. Now this is good because let's say for example, they book something and you want to let them know, hey, don't forget about your booking, uh, we'll send you an email, right? However, you can also use this as a thank you where you can send them a thank you message after they have returned the car, right? So it can work both ways. But for pickup reminder, we have two days, or I'll just do one day in advance, right? And for the message right here, this is actually where you would build the email. Now, also remember earlier in the video how we created those special short codes. You guys can also assign these short codes to be dynamically sent if customers meet a specific condition. For example, uh, here we have the condition new contract, right? Uh, we can put this inside of the email, right? And this is basically a contract that will be assigned for all the cars. Also, let's say for example, someone rented a limo and you want this email sent to people if they have met the condition of renting the limo. You can actually create specific conditions on what you want in this email, depending on what people rent. It's very, very dynamic. As you guys can tell, there's a thousand ways on how you guys can use this, but um, we'll go ahead and take a look right here. So this is an automated message to remind you that pickup for your car, we have a pickup date, right? You guys can add more to this, right? Like for example, here I'll put in like, uh, you know, thank you so much for renting our cars. And then here, Daryl cars, you know, darylcars.com. And then I'll click on visual here and you'll get a little preview, right? So Daryl cars, uh, you're the customer name. We have the pickup dates and then just some other general information, right? You guys can also choose to design this form right here. So for example, if you want to bold this, you'll click on bold. If you want to change something over here, you guys can use this little editor right here. And this will actually influence the colors, the size, and also the fonts. So with the cron job, you can actually send reminders uh, or some sort of notification to people when they either pick up or they drop off cars. So I'll go ahead and click on save. Now this right here was obviously a reminder, right? But we can create another one that is more of a, a thank you notice, right? So here I'll put in new cron job and I'll just make one. This will be like a thank you, right? And this is a reminder email, right? We'll do once daily, right? Now, I believe they will only get this email once if this is a drop off. So for the reminder type, we're gonna select after drop off message. Now, how many days after in advance will they get this message? Well, I'll just put one, right? And if we scroll down, I'll change this to something like, thank you so much. And then obviously we can go ahead and design and customize this any which way we want. We probably also need to fix this because this is saying pick up dates. So for example, here I'll put like, uh, you know, thank you so much for renting our car. And then maybe I'll put in like the order ID just to remind them like what they ordered, 
and stuff like that. And maybe here I can even put, put in like a, a coupon code or something, you know? So that's just something that I can add for the actual cron job. So the cron jobs are actually really helpful. You guys can also integrate the iCal calendars as well. There is an integration right here using the iCal calendars. This will actually sync up with your current um, calendar on the actual iMac. And if you guys do use the iCal calendar, you can integrate it with your actual computer. And then also you guys can do the same thing for like a backup creator. So if you guys do want to create like a backup of your websites, you guys can always go ahead and create backups of your websites, you know, once daily, once every week, because if you guys are a large company and you start getting a lot of sales, you guys might want to add this because if your website ever gets hacked or if something ever goes wrong, you guys can always just load a backup and then, you know, go back to business as usual. So I'll go ahead and now click on save and close. So the cron jobs are actually really helpful. If you guys are using the pro version, I think it's a great thing to add to your actual website. And just make sure that you want to execute these cron jobs. So now the backup has been successful and the cron job has been started. So now we are executing the cron job. And the last option that we're gonna use is the payment methods. Now this is how you guys can integrate credit cards and PayPal onto your website. Now, if you guys just do wanna basically use an offline credit card, you'll click on offline credit card. Now this actually will record the credit card information, but it will not charge them. You guys will have to charge them on your own, right? So uh, for example, if you guys do enable this, you guys can turn this on right here, the offline credit card. You can charge also a additional amount or a discount. This is actually helpful if you are charging with a specific merchant that has higher fees. You can use this in order to protect yourself, right? Or you can have a dollar amount or like a, you know, like a 1% charge if they use like, you know, this service. Maybe your payment processor charges you more money. So you guys can go ahead and add a charge there. You guys can also set this to auto confirm. And then they have some more styling options for your firm as well. On the right side, you'll have the request CVV code. So if you guys do have the HTTPS on your website, which you guys do, because uh, you guys are probably using like Name Hero or Hostinger, you guys can turn this on and you can record the credit card and the CVV code. So offline credit card is very helpful. It's actually a good method on how to record credit cards. You can store the credit card information and then once they arrive, you can then charge them. Next, we have the PayPal option. Now, PayPal option is pretty standard, right? With PayPal, all you have to do here is put in your email and that's it. So you'll go to paypal.com and you'll simply just go ahead and create an account, right? Once you guys create an account, I don't know why this is in Spanish here. <laughs> I have no idea why. But uh, once you guys create an account with PayPal, uh, all you'll have to do is you'll just go ahead and take the email that you used to sign up with and you'll simply paste it in. For example, my PayPal email accounts, I'll go ahead and put it in here, is mrwilson at email.com. When people purchase on my website, all the money will go to my PayPal account where I can actually transfer it to my real bank account. Also make sure that you guys do have published on. Published means that this is a real payment gateway that people can use. So you do want to make sure that if you do want to enable this payment gateway that you have it published. So I'll go ahead now and click on save. And the last option that we're going to use is the Stripe method. Now I'll show you guys how to integrate this website with Stripe. We're going to go ahead and go to stripe.com. Now, in case you guys are brand new to Stripe, Stripe is a free service with no credit check. It works pretty much in all of South America, all of, all of the United States, and all of Europe. It's a very popular method. There is no monthly fee. There is a 2.9 transaction fee, but it's a very convenient system. And a lot of people use Stripe because it's really easy to integrate with your website. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in right here and I'll show you guys how to integrate your website with Stripe. So I'll click on sign in. So this is stripe.com and we can use this website to accept payments on our website. Uh, for example, I'll go ahead and click on the developer section and show you how to integrate this. It's really, really simple. All you have to do is copy and paste something and you're done. Over here under API keys, you will then see you have a publishable key. You'll go back to your website, you will paste in the publishable key, right? And then you'll also click on reveal secret key. And then you'll go ahead and paste in the secret key right there. Like that. You will then select the currency. And then for payment type, you want to make sure this is selected to pay, right? So then they'll pay on your website. And then here you'll put in your company name, your image URL, and so on and so forth. You'll also go ahead and put in your custom logo. And then you also have some other styling options right here, like auto set to confirm, which I do like because that makes it so there's no holdup with your payments. 
Uh, once you guys put all those options in, you'll just click on save. And that's it. Your website's fully integrated with Stripe. Your website can now accept credit card payments on your website. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and go to visit site here. And let's just take a look at the actual checkout process. So I'll go ahead and select Las Vegas to Las Vegas. Here we go. We'll go ahead and put the 29th to the 31st. I don't know why, why that's getting all weird right there. That's weird. All right. So here we go. We got the Q16 Infinity. I'll click on continue. Here we have the pricing types and we also have add-ons as well, right? So we did have the add-ons. So I'll click on book now. And here's our order summary, right? And we can also enter in our coupon code. So if you guys do have a coupon code for your customers, they can go ahead and apply it here and it'll reduce the price. And then below that, we have the driver information where we have the first name, the last name and all the information. Uh, they'll go ahead and click on, I have read. Now there's a few options, right? We have the offline credit card, we have the credit card, and then we also have PayPal. Uh, with these options, with PayPal and credit card, you guys will receive the payment immediately. With bank transfer and offline credit card, they'll go ahead and pay you at your establishment. So it really depends on how you wanna approach the rental website. But uh, right here, I'll click on credit card and click on confirm. And once the customer enters in their credit card information, it'll then take them back to their confirmation page where they'll see their personal details, the order details, and all of the information. They can also go ahead and download this PDF and they can also ask to cancel or modify the appointments. One thing I also do wanna mention that the pro version does not include the actual payment gateway of Stripe, right? So you guys will need to purchase the Stripe plugin as an additional add-on, right? So you'll go ahead and purchase the pro version and then also purchase the Stripe integration and then you'll integrate it to your actual website. I do feel like the developer should add the Stripe integration in the pro, but again, it's really not my plugin, so I don't really have any say in it. Well, thank you guys so much for watching party people. This video took me a long time to make, it took me about six to seven hours of recording. Uh, I went through pretty much everything, right? We went through the free version, the pro version, and also how to integrate payment gateways. So I really do hope this video helped you guys out. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I will do my best to get back to them. Also, if you guys do need help, you guys can go to their website and get free support because you guys have purchased the actual products. All right, party people, congratulations on your car rental website. Now, usually at the end of the video, I'm always like, oh, it was so easy, right? But, you know, with this specific plugin, there is somewhat of a learning curve, you know? So after using this plugin for maybe, I would say like a month or two, you'll get the hang of it. There definitely is going to be some trial and error where you're going to have to like, you know, find out where you made a mistake. But after using it for a few months, you'll definitely get the hang of it. And before I make these videos on YouTube, I actually go and I purchase like seven or eight plugins and I test them out. That's actually half the battle of these videos. You know, before this video, I tested out MotoPress and all these other plugins. And to be honest, none of them really had a lot of good functionality and I just couldn't feel confident recommending it to anybody. But this plugin, the Vic WP, uh, Vic WP Rental or Vic Rental, it's a great plugin and the developer is constantly updating it, adding more features. So I think you'll be really happy with this uh, website. So if you guys have any questions for me, feel free to let me know in the comments below and let me know how I did. You know, was this easy to follow? Was this a good video? Let me know in the comments. And until then, I will see all of you party people in the next video. Take care.